It's time for Twig this week in Google. We got a heavy duty, big conversation going on about YouTube, whether they should be paying more attention to the weird stuff on YouTube kids. Uh, Jeff Jarvis is going to defend Facebook. We're going to talk about everything in the underneath the sun, including flying cars. Yes, they're coming to Los Angeles in 2020, maybe. It's all coming up next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 430, recorded Wednesday, November 8th, 2017. Uber's liftoff. This Week in Google is brought to you by Eero. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Eero's hyper-fast, super-simple Wi-Fi system. And now the second-generation Eero is tri-band, twice as fast. For free overnight shipping, visit Eero.com, select overnight shipping at checkout, and enter the code TWIG. And by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash twig. And by Lighthouse. Lighthouse is the only security camera powered by the same technology that's in self-driving cars. Visit light.house slash twit to sign up for 15% off Lighthouse when they ship and a chance to win a free Lighthouse plus a year of service. See site for contest rules. It's time for Twig this week in Google. A show where we get to... Oh, this is going to be a good one. I've been waiting for this one all week. Talk about some of the most interesting things happening in the world of technology, particularly with, the, with what Farhad Manju calls the Frightful Five. Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon. Joining us right now from the... Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York, Mr. Jeff Jarvis, buzzmachine.com, author of What Would Google Do? Public Parts, Geeks Bearing Gifts. Hey, Jeffrey. Hey. Nice to see you. Good to see you. We're going uh, to see you off to Argentina next week. That'll be fun. Next week, yes. Yeah. Argentina. I, I love Buenos Aires. What a great I've town. never been there. I've been dying to go there for years. I'm only going to be there for two days. Yeah. Oh. But, uh, You'll have fun. Yeah. Also here, journalist par excellence, Stacey Higginbotham. She, uh, she was, she's was she been around. <laughs> she was at GigaOM. I didn't realize you worked for Time Warner, Time Inc. Time Inc., Fortune. Oh, Fortune, that's right. Yeah, yeah well, you were there yeah. for a cup of coffee. Uh, a whole year, actually. Really? That's like that's like a cup and a half. It seemed like it went fast. It, it did. She was very smart. In fact, she, I saw you acknowledge that the other day. You did the right <laughs> thing. You started your own business. Stacy on IOT. It's a newsletter. It's a podcast with Kevin Toffel, and it's going great guns, right? It is. It's actually doing really well. You so got the thank scoop. You guys. I saw you on Tech Meme. You got the scoop on uh, ADT and Ring. Well, actually, Law 360 was reporting from the courtroom, so I just brought that out. Yeah, but that's the point. That's 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 the trick, right? I know, I know, but like you gotta know I where to look. wasn't physically there. All As right. a journalist, I'm like, I got to give credit to the people who actually went and did the the footwork. Absolutely. What is your take on that? You know, um, I, I've talked to some people who say, AD, this isn't a surprise, ADT is very aggressive. About ADT is super aggressive. Yeah. They have been, they have done some really shady things, both they and Alarm. If you look at some of their lawsuits back and forth between each yeah. other, you'll see some pretty crazy tactics. They claim that now, Ring, they blocked, and a judge agreed, by the way. Judge gave him a temporary yeah. injunction against Ring's new security system, which they haven't, they've announced but haven't shipped, and I think may miss Christmas because of this. Um, Probably, yes. Claiming uh, it violates uh, their patents or property rights. Yes, what and we should mention is, Ring is a sponsor. I just want to say that real quickly. Ring's a sponsor of the show. Um, oh, not, yeah. not that that changes anything. It doesn't make me more in favor of them or not. I don't really well, know the facts. So Ring. So I don't know how many. How, I don't know how many of the facts you actually want to know. So that's probably because you know it all. Because I have a lot of information. <laughs> it's very dull. <laughs> um, so ADT alleges that. Um, they not only stole their intellectual property, but they did so in a pretty like James Bondian kind of way. So 
ADT had invested in Zonoff and was contracted with Zonoff to do some, have Zonoff do some work for them. I know the guys at Zonoff. I've known them for years. The CEO, super nice, yeah. Mike Harris, super yeah. nice ethical dude. Um, basically, they had a deal, they had an M&A deal that fell through while they were being shopped. When that fell through, they kind of ran out of money. They couldn't pay ADT back for a note. And they were going to shut down the entire company. And then the next day, Ring gave everybody at Zonoff a job. It's 75 people they hired. 75 people. I think all but one took the job. And Mike Harris went over. Now, ADT alleges that Mike Harris took all of ADT's IP because ADT, once, once Zonoff missed that payment, ADT got all of their IP. So ADT's like... Mike Harris handed Jamie Seminoff one, you know, RIP in a briefcase in a parking lot in Pennsylvania, which sounds really good, but I don't know if that's actually true. So a judge gave them a uh, temporary injunction. This sometimes happens and you go to court saying, look, while we're deciding this case, can you stop them from selling this infringing device? The judge agreed. So that's bad news for Ring. They're going to miss a big buying season. Meanwhile, Nest has a very similar device, which they're advertising heavily. And I think it's kind of interesting. I, I have an article on The Verge about this. And uh, right next to it, it's, it's gone now because I guess it was a carousel. I got an ADT ad. So uh, I don't I should, know. I should actually say ADT is an advertiser right now on my show. Yeah. Well, they, this they, I mean, part of this is that this is a big, and there's a Nest ad. So this is a big, there's a big buying season right now for these kind of and security devices. Everybody has a new security company or a new security product. So right. Nest just launched theirs. Yep. Ring launched theirs and now is put putting it on hold. Uh, Wink just launched a system. We've also got uh, Almond, which is a router company. It's smaller, but they just launched a system. Uh, Notion just said that their stuff's going to work with Nest stuff. So, oh my God, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, so. it's a, it just shows you it's a big market. The it home is. Security well, only 20% of American homes have monitored security. Oh, but everybody's like interested in having security. In my experience with monitored security is I don't like it. Uh, we had monitored security. We've had it. We have it now. Every business has to have it. But the false, you know, oh, it's just kind of annoying. The calls in the middle of the night. Poor John took the brunt of those. But the calls in the middle of the night because one of the sensors went off. And we never, was there ever any, how many, we, we must have had a dozen in two years. And there was never any real intruders. Um, and at, at, finally got to the point where the Petaluma Police Department says, you're going to start paying for these if, if, if we have to keep going That's the out. problem, yeah. And I yeah. think that monitored security often, well, there's just issues. Now, they, they, they call you, and that's, you know, most of the time we were able to preempt it. John would come down and see what was going on. But I've gone down there to meet the police a couple of middle of the night rendezvous. So, yeah, I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> so, and, um, with good reason. Yeah. I don't know if it's a good thing for the home. Maybe it is. If you're going to be a long, gone a long time, I guess. Well, just have the neighbors look in and feed the cat once in a while. Water the plants. Pick up the mail. Water the cat, feed the plants. <laughs> <laughs> um, and well, as long as we're in, in the courtroom, let's not, uh, let's not leave the courtroom just yet. The Supreme Court has thrown out the Samsung Apple case. Remember, Apple sued Samsung for saying slide to unlock. We own that. Samsung fought it, lost, fought it, lost. They finally uh, ended up appealing to the Supreme Court. SCOTUS declined to hear the appeal. So uh, Apple does owe slide to unlock, and Samsung owes them several hundred million dollars for Oof, infringing. Thing. Good thing we're moving to facial and fingerprint <laughs> unlocking, huh? Yeah, it's so funny. I mean, <laughs> I don't, I don't go on. And uh, you were talking about this uh, earlier, uh, Jeff. Uh, there were rumors, and now it's been uh, confirmed that, uh, according to uh, the Department of Justice, AT and T must jettison CNN for the Time Warner merger to occur. There's some politics in here, of course, because we know the president's not a fan of CNN, and some think this is punitive. This is coming from the White House. Um, I've been reading Twitter about it, which, of course, now takes twice as long. <laughs> oh, um, them, I, I, I buried the lead. Twitter, now 280 characters. I, and everybody insists on writing their first tweet, 280-character uh, tweet, which usually means a bunch of crap. 
Yeah, I get the joke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, this will I mean, this will this will pass this'll... over, right? I hope so. Hashtag um, two hundred eighty characters. But but <laughs> this you this get... AT and AT and T time warning thing will go to court, and uh, Trump's public statements will probably have an impact. Sure. And I mean, I, but you know, I one of his public Twitter. statements during the campaign was he didn't want the merger to happen at all. Right. He said, if I'm elected, there will be no TTT Time Warner merger, which I'm in favor of. Let's, I don't think it's a good idea. The problem is it's a, it's a, it's not a competitive merger. It's, it's, it's a complementary merger. So there's, it's right. hard there's very to, to stop it. Yeah. 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 There really is. <laughs> Um, Last Pass decided to use its 200 characters, 280 characters to tweet 280 characters of bad passwords. There's a lot of this. Oh, I have gotten so many. I, I see so many people tweeting period yeah. return, period return. Pit I'm like, Arr. Pittsburgh Steelers took this occasion to tweet all of its former players in the Football Hall of Fame. Here's a William Carlos Williams poem. Is it the plum totally. poem? Uh, I have eaten the plums plum. that were in, were in the, the icebox, ice and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me. They were delicious, so sweet, and so cold. Yep. It's a good use of 280 characters. One of the news organizations, I forget which one, uh, put up the Trump bus quote, shall I say? Yes, a lot the of them. I saw that retweeted like crazy. Yeah. Here's a good use of 280 characters. Ohio State put up the Ohio State uh, song. Where, you know, the eyes of Texas are upon you. It might work. <laughs> I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. Here's one. Louise Dover tweeted, Obama sucks, Hillary sucks, Obama sucks, Hillary sucks, Obama sucks, Hillary sucks. <laughs> That's creative. Arby's. MGM Studios, The Lion's Roar. It goes on and on and on. Please, kids, let's grow up. This is like when uh, Apple first came out with typefaces and every every letter looked like a ransom note. Or like the an emojis. An emojis. You're right. Hey, if there's Lord. a blessing to 280 characters, <laughs> it's to stop the goddamn an emoji karaoke's. <laughs> So, uh, you know. So, you know. Mm. Somebody said uh, 280 characters is, is Twitter's equivalent of fat Elvis. Fat Twitter. <laughs> I like it. Um, we're going to talk about this article. And th this really, I think, is going to be uh, the centerpiece of the show today. Because I really, uh, I found this fascinating. Uh, a, I don't know James Bridal. I don't know who he is. He says he's a writer and an artist. Uh, it looks like his uh, his uh, avatar is Malcolm McDowell from um, that one where the kids the the kids revolt against the British. A Clockwork Orange. No, no, it's an earlier one. Uh, what's it called? Where the uh, the students revolt in the public school. I can't remember the name of it. Um, anyway, he says he's a writer and artist, but he does he has observed something quite interesting about the, the uh, algorithmically generated videos aimed at children, young, almost, in many cases, pre-verbal children, that are des decidedly disturbing. And whether this is intentional or accidental or it's the Russians, we'll talk about that. That's going to be the centerpiece. Uh, speaking of Russians, Marissa Meyer says she's sorry that uh, Yahoo was hacked and the Russians did it. She testified today in front of the Senate. And she said... Um, you know, I was on my watch, and uh, I, I apologize for the two massive data breaches. She blames the Russians for it, although there is apparently no evidence that the Russians were involved. She said, unfortunately, while all our measures helped Yahoo successfully defend against the barrage of attacks by both private and state-sponsored hackers, Russian agents intruded on our systems and stole our users' data. Uh, in 2013, there was a breach of all 3 billion Yahoo accounts. Yahoo had previously said 1 billion. Uh, in March, federal prosecutors charged two Russian intelligence agents and two hackers with masterminding a theft of half a billion Yahoo accounts. That's actually the only charge, at, the, to, at least the first charge, against Russian spies for cybercrimes that I know of. Uh, 
But the FBI says the 2013 breach was unrelated. Meyer later said under questioning she didn't know if Russians were responsible for the 2013 breach. But they, they sure are a convenient scapegoat. <laughs> well, no one knows still who did the uh, 2013. So that's the first time we've heard about uh, Ms. Meyer since uh, she left Yahoo. Uh, let's see. Gosh, there's a, actually today there is a, a we're jam packed. There's tons do you, do you want to talk about the Facebook nudes or are we saving, are we saving our <laughs> No, about no. Why should we save that's that? A, that's a heck of a story. Facebook. Like, I think we should just go into it. Facebook yep. says it can combat revenge porn. Good. We don't like that. Good news. Twitter says the same thing. Uh, but in order to do it on Facebook, you have to upload nudes of yourself. And is it nudes or is it is it it's a, is it the actual photos you're afraid are going to get out? Uh oh. Well, so are they hashing your fate or identity or are they hashing the actual photo? Yeah, it's actually uh, the actual photo. It says Facebook says if you send the the photo you're worried about to the company first, it will make sure it doesn't show up because and they won't have they won't store them. They'll create a digital, you know, hash which will help the but image the interns, technology. The interns who make sure the hash work well. <laughs> well, uh, I'd be nervous. Know, well. Okay, well, wait, the Daily Beast just put up a story saying that it's actually going to be a person that looks at these. So Facebook what? workers, not an algorithm, will look at volunteered nude photos first to stop revenge uh, porn. Here, let me drop this in comments. First, you upload an explicit image of yourself to Facebook Messenger, which you can do by starting a conversation with yourself. Then you flag it. There's a new flag called non-consensual intimate image. Uh, at that point, the social network builds what is referred to as a hash of the image. Facebook says it's not storing the photos. I don't know why anybody would need to look at it, except I guess it could be misused to by people to block other photos, right? Or if another user the tries to upload... Clinton. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If another user tries to upload the same image on Facebook or Instagram, Facebook will test it against its stored hashes and stop it. So, yeah, I understand because you can't... you got to make sure it really is a, um explicit photo... So some poor person has to go, oh, ah, oh, no, that one's okay. Ah, like that for like eight hours a day. Yeah. And with a real person involved, I'm sure nobody's nudes will ever get compromised. <laughs> uh, hey, boss, well, I, 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 I heard there's an opening over there in the, uh, in the Facebook uh, standards and yeah. practices. And I just like to uh, apply. You probably don't want to see the nudes for I like, don't. the average American. I, I don't. gotta be honest. It's not a good job. And I know and I've 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 heard of heard from and talked to actually I don't know if I've personally talked, but I know people who have talked to people who do these kinds of things for companies, you know, Twitter and Facebook and and it's a terrible job. The burnout is very high. Oh yeah. It's gotta be. Just a terrible job. You don't want that job. But I'm willing to try. I'm just I'll give them a shot. No, I wouldn't do it. But You're gonna send your pictures? <laughs> Oh, that's a good idea. Oh no! Let me ask my iPhone if there's any Brazier pictures of me. Oh, Lord. so so hold on, hold. On. Let me let me just run the logic of this. So imagine if there were a way that I could make a hash of my own photo, and all I send in is the hash. Right? There's a program that lets me hash a photo. Oh, that would be the way to do it. But then they still then, can't. Then wait, wait, wait. Then the photo comes in, and the alarm goes off. Says whoop whoop whoop. That's a bad photo. That's when you look at. Oh, it. you're right. Okay, but you don't if look you at my photo, photo, I just send in a hash. That makes no, sense. Send, no, because no, 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 wait, though. No, no, if you send in the hash, it has to be unhashed for the computer to actually match no, that's the what the Jeff's that. saying. No. Jeff's saying that you Facebook gives you everybody a, a program they can run locally on right. their photos. Mm -hmm. So the photos never do get uploaded, just the hash of it. You're brilliant. Jeff, would you call Mark and tell him this? Then it uploads the hash. Trying to solve so many of their problems. And the problem, of course, is the false positive or the, or the prankster who wants to keep Photos of, let's say, Hillary Clinton photos off Facebook. So when the alarm does go off, that's when a human looks and says, no, that's Hillary, and lets it through. Or, no, yeah, that's explicit and blocks it. Yeah. That would be much better. So then the vulnerable person is only sending in a hash. Yes. Oh, come on, it's Facebook. Dull. Yeah, it's brilliant. If well, I do say so myself. You have Mark's number. Call him. <laughs> Mark, about these explicit photos... But I want to point out, it took Jeff about three seconds to think of the solution. Why is Facebook like, oh, well, Lord. Well, plus, even, even the instructions they have, you got to 
share it with yourself and then report it. And That's then bizarre. Do this and do that. Ay, ay, ay. I think you should patent this. Plus, the, well, the, but there's another problem to it. So let's say that you and your honey uh, do something and the, he, presuming he's the bad guy, takes the photos. And it's on his phone and you don't have them. So you're fearing what's being put up, but you don't have access to them. That this my, my solution doesn't solve that. That's still a problem. Yeah, and I can't prevent yeah. it. Then I, I think that's. I would be honest. That's probably more often the case. Um, well, the nudes that you send them aren't the ones that you're worried about. It's no, they're supposed to be the ones, ones you're worried about. No, no, they're because oh. oh, well, they, then this is just stupid in so many ways. Yeah. It's just a, it's just one of those publicity stunts. It's a they publicity stunt, and we gave them. But the publicity, but the publicity is going to be terrible. Yeah. Publicity is going to be Facebook wants you to send them your sex pictures. Yeah, this is this this. Ugh. Uh, yeah. Ugh. Are we? Are we? I'm. We had a very good conversation with uh, Ed Bot about Facebook. There, I'm getting more and more disturbed by uh, this company in particular, but in general by the big data collection going on in all companies. This is the the uh, Cashmere Hills got another great article now. Now this is a lot of this is anecdotal, so I'm curious what you think about this. How it's the people you may know section in Facebook. Yeah, she's been on that for a while. And here are the examples. Uh, you know, it started with her, right? She, she the, her personal story. You know, I, I don't want to go into. All, I can't remember all the details, but basically, somebody she knows, you know, is connected with their family, but nobody else would know was offered to her as people you may know on Facebook. And it was like yeah, weird. Yeah, but, but that one... It wait, went wait, wait, well. Wait, but there's all kinds but there's all kinds of connections to connections. She does know them. I mean, this 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 is a okay. paranoid... So let me... Oh my God, they're listening It to might this. be. It might not be. I mean, when you when I read these, and they're, again, they're anecdotal. Who could, who knows? It could be a coincidence. How, how, I'll give you a couple. She says she's heard more than 100 bewildering anecdotes. Here's one. A man who years ago donated sperm to a couple secretly so they could have a child had Facebook recommend the child as a person he should know. He does know yeah, the he, couple. He still knows. But he's not friends the with them on Facebook. But he still knows the couple, and there's friends of friends. And if it ties him to that couple, then the fact that that child is connected is not hard okay. to see how that happens. Folks. Okay, is here's another hard. one. But okay, Facebook I Facebook is pulling data from other places, too. Mostly what I would guess in this case from other Facebook accounts. Like, no, I mean like your credit reports and not your credit well, reports. Do we know they're from, doing that? I believe they talked about pulling data from transactions. Okay. So it me, wouldn't me, it me. wouldn't require that to do this because I Jeff's right the scenario would be the couple, he's not friends with them, but they have a friend in common. Right? Yeah. And so He's friends with somebody who's friends with them, and Facebook's algorithm would would parse that and say, "Oh well, since you know him, you might know her." I know yeah, and if you look at the people they recommend to me, it goes way the hell out. I can't figure out. I mean, it's it's it's, it's so far it almost seems random. Um, so All right, the how connections about this one? Are very loose connections. A social worker whose client called her by her nickname on their second visit because she'd shown up in his people you may know despite their not having exchanged any contact information. It's, again, Once I guess again, friend, they may live friend in the same friend. town. Yeah. They, 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 you know, the, 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 the maybe, how, how did you get recommended to the shrink in the first okay. place? It may be through friends. This one's tough. But again, you're right. You could you could come up with ex ways this could have happened. And that's the problem with anecdotal uh, evidence like this. A woman whose father left her family when she was six had his mistress of the time, 40 years later, suggested to her at Facebook, not his current mistress or current partner, but somebody 40 years ago. Once again, we don't know what the connections are. Could we don't more. know. Okay. Attorney who wrote, I deleted Facebook after a recommended person. People you may know, a man who was defense counsel on one of my cases. We had only communicated through my work email, which is not connected to Facebook, which convinced me Facebook was scanning my work email. Yeah, I hear these stories all the time about Amazon Echo as well. Remember that we, uh, we were having a conversation about traveling, my husband and I, in front of the Echo, and all of a sudden Amazon started spamming me with luggage ads. That's somebody actually told me that. Well, but I, I'm going to go back to my story about the journalist who who told his family and friends on Facebook that oh man, I fell down and I broke my phone, and this happened and that happened. He started getting ads for multiple sclerosis. 
It wasn't because somebody sat at Facebook and said, this guy has MS. It's because there were small signals there right. the advertiser had and connections and AI systems to say people who have multiple sclerosis happen to do these things. And there's signals that, that, are, that are not intuitive, we don't know. And yeah, welcome to the world of data, folks. Uh, but uh, it's not some mysterious, conspiratorial, creepy thing. It's just there is an answer to how this happened. We just don't know what the answer is, and we don't like black boxes. Okay, so Facebook has done deals with, back in 2012, it had a deal with Data Logics to get data from stores where you made purchases. In 2016, there was a story out saying Facebook looks at GPS data and contracted with Square to get their data for both who's in stores and what they're buying. Oh, wow. So, yes, Facebook wow. does get external data. And it's just like magazines do deals with Axiom. Yes, I'm not I saying, did, but, but yeah, Facebook, I didn't know that you could opt out of a lot of those companies. I just found that out yesterday. So researchers have determined that between four and eight pieces of data are all that's needed yeah. to de-anonymize someone. And location and data actually requires less. So if you start thinking about that, Facebook knows who you are and can start making some surprising correlations. And that's what's freaking people out. Well, and I think Kashmir acknowledges that. And But what she says, this is still cause for concern. She says, she writes, behind the Facebook profile you've built for yourself is another one. A shadow profile built from the inboxes and smartphones of other Facebook users. Contact information you've never given the network gets associated with your account making it easier for Facebook to more completely map your social connections. Really what's happening is we're reaching critical mass. That the data points that Facebook knows about you have gotten rich enough now that they can they can probably build a pretty good replica of your social graph by inference, not direct connection, right? Not not even your social graph. This is people who you have relationships with that you don't even you may not even be aware of. Right. So it's well, she, here's the example with the attorney. Facebook, she says, is not scanning the work email of the attorney, of course. I mean, it might look like that. But it likely has her work address on file, even if she never gave it to Facebook herself. Because if anyone who has the lawyer's address in their contacts has show, shared their contacts with Facebook, which most everybody does, then the company can link her to anyone else who has it, like the defense counsel in one of her cases. So Kashmir is not uh, asserting any creepy... No, she's, she's, and she's, she's just pointing the out. She's the sanest person writing about this. Yeah. yeah, she's just pointing out that this is the nature, this is how Facebook works. I, where is people you may know? Because I'm in, I don't, I don't well, see any Well, recommend things to you all the time. Oh, yeah. I don't see any on my page. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't, it, it comes up in your, in your feed. That's what I thought, but I don't, but I guess I don't know anybody. Facebook has gotten less well, and many, less. Do you have, are you, you know who I only, almost always only see is you, Jeff? You're sick of me. I know. You're sick of me. <laughs> you, I see your tweet. Look at this. This is my Facebook page right now. It's all Jeff Jarvis all the time. Look at It's all Richard Jeff Jarvis. Painter. And then there's an ad. Richard Painter. Do you ever watch Richard Painter on TV? No. He's he's the ethics. He was the Bush ethics guy who's on he's on MSNBC constantly. He's like Dick Tracy. He talks like Dick Tracy. He's just <laughs> he's the greatest. I love this guy. He's amazing. Uh, I'm trying to look for, of course, right now, Facebook's not recommending anybody to me. I get it all the time. Yeah, uh, I think maybe they turned this off after Kashmir's article. <laughs> hmm. I'll go to friends mm -hmm. and then go to find friends. Oh, maybe I can do it by hand. And then, uh, no, that's, that's sent requests. I know, I've seen this before. Uh, and right. and I've accepted a bunch of friends that way, and it's mostly people. Uh, oh, then no, go to friends, yeah. go to the little two people on the top, uh, okay. uh, and people. then and scroll. Find and friends. See. Oh, here it is. People you P Y M K. I know Daniel. I I don't know Floris. Uh, I don't know Fernando. I Petaluma Dental Group used to go there. They're not my dentist anymore. Scott Bourne, mutual friend. <laughs> Aunt, I I know Aunt. Let's add him. Uh, I don't. Huh. Uh, Jane I'm Spencer works mine. at The Guardian. Yeah, This guy's dead. Shouldn't it? I mean, literally, he passed <laughs> away a few years ago. Should should he be in there? I'll follow him anyway. <laughs> he, he, there hasn't been a lot on his timeline lately. Um, huh. Mine's yeah. pretty terrible. Is it? Like bad, bad yeah. suggestions? But I am never on Facebook. 
Right, like, me neither. I, I don't so give them a maybe lot of signals. So they they get very little for me, yeah. but I like the top person is someone I have no idea. There's let's see. There's also 71 pending friend requests. So um, yeah. Oh, I've got 960. <laughs> like Facebook's probably like I give up with you. <laughs> well, it oh. did for a while. It did for a while. No one could could make a friend request for me for like 2 years and I kind of enjoyed it. Oh, I I just ignore everything on Facebook. It's very me. hard. I I you always talk about moral panic uh, and uh, Jeff and uh, and I understand that. And of course, I agree with you. Um, but at the same time, it's very hard not to sometimes look at this stuff, even if you know better, and say it's kind of creepy. That's why it needs explanation. The creepiness is the mystery. And that's why transparency matters. That's why just saying this is what's happening, folks. And 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 they may not want to because there's other I factors don't think, here. But okay. I don't think that it is just creepy. I think people are taking Facebook signals or signals from other data, and they're applying it towards things like credit report or credit card, uh, mortgage lending, uh, insurance payments. And they're making actual real world decisions based on this. And people don't understand it, it's gone out of their control. Social and I would, redlining. Social redlining. And I would argue that some of the same worries we have about, for example, that the YouTube story we're going to talk about later are, are very similar issues here. Yeah. We're automating oh, they are. things that they are. we yeah. don't understand. They're closely and, related. I agree. Yeah. But but so, but that doesn't mean that we, we outlaw them now. It means we try to understand them better. You can't understand how a computer. So this is MIT actually put out, I want to say it was two weeks ago, the some good research, MIT Tech Review had some an article about how researchers are trying to open up the black box of AI. Because what you do when you're building a neural network, when you're building these kind of algorithms, it, it, depending on how you're teaching the computer, but you're giving it lots of examples, you're tweaking it when it's right to help push it towards the right answers, the answers you want. But the computer figures all this out on its own. So we really don't actually understand how it's coming to some of the conclusions it comes to. All we can do is say, yeah, that's right. Good job. I, so, you know, my list of people is actually pretty good. There's probably about, about 15 people in here I would like to know. There's a lot of ones I don't, but. Here's a, a posting from Stanley Lieber, and it's, he's, I don't even know who he is. It's, a, it's actually, actually, the images oh. in this are great. Do you know who he is? No, this one was, was this is an example of techno panic. Okay. Okay, let me let me just mention it, and and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you all can be the judge. By the way, his title is "You Won't Understand This." He said, "This is my exit interview from social media," and he and he kind of talks about each service, and then talks about the the insights he's learned. I remember the internet before Google. F you forever, Google, for breaking email for everyone in the world. F you forever for enticing users who don't know any better into relying upon your services and then shuttering them with little warning. Your extensions to established standards and ever-changing policies make it increasingly impossible for individuals to host and control their own information. Yes, I am aware this is no accident. Search quality is no longer a core competency of Google's, the Internet's premier search engine. Two people type the same search, each receives a different result. Yes, I'm aware this is likewise no accident. The quality of ads displayed alongside various Google services has steadily devolved from semi-relevant to absolutely irrelevant at all times. Yes, I'm aware this is no accident. Uh, then he's talking about uh, he has negatives in each column and malware served is one of them. That's true. Insight. <laughs> this is kind of a joke. Google does not want you to know or remember anything, if at all possible. <laughs> Then he talks about Facebook. Mandatory nonlinear curation of user contributed content, malware served, gamification of personal interaction degrades human health. I can't I can't disagree with him on that. Gamification, right? That's what they're doing. Of personal interaction degrades human health. It's bad for you. No? He says Facebook provides worldwide 24-7 telepathic content with every contact with every person I or members of my extended network have ever met. How many degrees of separation between me and the worst person alive? Now that person knows that my mom threw up after breakfast and wants to offer advice. <laughs> Twi I kind of enjoyed this. Twitter, worldwide 24-7 telepathic content with every person I 
or people I used to think of as friends ever met or favorited or we tweeted. How many degrees of separation between me and the worst person alive? Now that person knows the GPS coordinates of my bedroom. <laughs> Gamification of personal interaction degrades human health. You see, but hold on right there. That's the line that got quoted, right? And I, I know quoted that, by the way. Joke. That's me, yeah. Well, others did as well. Okay. And, and <sighs> it's just, it, uh, there's a damage being done here, and that's what concerns me. I, I'm, I'm about to give up. I'm, I'm tired of this fight. I think there's a damage the being done to us. The game of, I think it's exactly uh, right. What, uh, what used to be a benevolent, uh, in fact, valuable uh, thing in life, which was interaction between two humans on a real, uh, genuine, intimate level, has been degraded into these, into these tweet storms. Hold on, Leo. Hold on. Reality check. So, I, I, you know, you hear this, oh, my God, panic, panic, panic. So go through your Facebook feed and point out the first piece of degrading, horrible crap you find. <laughs> you're going to be scrolling for a few hours. Really? It's Yeah. I don't see degrading, horrible crap in my – and I use Facebook a lot, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to oomph up stuff to me. No. And even, and even Twitter. I mean, you know, unless you, unless you want to go follow the no, jerks. you're right. It's all friends and nice people. And yes. Yes. <laughs> and we're losing sight of that. Yeah, but it's <sighs> – it's more subtle you know, than that. It's more subtle than that. Oh, it's oh, oh, oh. it's, it's uh, uh, I don't know. I think it's pseudo uh, relationship. So well, there's uh, been well, plenty. Okay, do no, it, stop. But. Okay, so there's plenty of things. This guy, you know, Jeff, you can scream techno panic, but there are plenty of people who have bemoaned the fact that these online services and even software and apps are gamifying things to get you to spend more time to boost their metrics and a lot of people are rightly concerned about this kind of digital it manipulation feels exactly what it feels living. We make, hey stacy we make a living doing that writing headlines and journalism <laughs> it's so, exactly yes. what we do yes we do but we also we're offer, not that good like, at it that's the difference <laughs> that's exactly well, right okay we're not that good at it but we so also holy. offer i'm not i'm not trying to be holy i'm just saying that this is this is a thing that's happened. It's also I was going to make the point that we have been worried about this with TV forever. Yeah, and and and, we have and see this is this is exactly what moral panic is. The TV is going to ruin society. That that gives no respect to the members of society. But that with, we are such without, sheeple that we could be pulled along. I don't believe without that. this debate then we do get unfettered manipulation. And I would say, so I actually tweeted this because I thought this was a really good example of digital manipulation that is horribly uncool and takes advantage of vulnerable people. And it was uh, the internetting with Amanda Hess column from the New York Times this week, which was a four minute video talking about beauty apps and filters for various uh, Instagram, Snapchat, et cetera. And Basically, the idea was that they're pushing just insane standards of beauty, like facial bleaching, nose mushing, and all of these other things to give you, give young girls plastic looking faces. Uh, and the, I, they talked about how gamification is really driving these girls back and forth, and it does have a measurable effect on their self esteem. And we can't ignore that. And we shouldn't ignore that. And you can call it techno panic, but I think we should be having these conversations because otherwise we're just giving them a pass to take advantage of everyone. And that's not cool. And that's that's my thought. Yeah, but 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 the bottom line, it's people doing the bad stuff. Yeah. Well it's and, it's, and, and the norms uh, that we need to create, the norms we, you're right, we have the conversation, but blaming just the technology and the platform. Well, no, no. No, there are people who are doing bad things it's and not, we need to blame them. It's the corporations using technology in ways that were well, never. You possible. can turn that around, Leah. You could also say that the technology exists and people come in and exploit what was meant for good. Yes. Well, how did Matt yes. Cutts make his make his salary, right? Because something good was created that people then exploited for bad. And and they have to put enough resources into it to try to stop that from happening. But the chicken and egg here is not that the big, big bad technology company comes along and says, how can we ruin society and make a fortune doing so? I don't believe that. They That's what can you make hear it happen at scale. And that is what's scaring people. There They're are a couple of things it. that are very scary. One, you can very cheaply learn how to gamify people 
incredibly effectively. So A-B testing costs nothing on these platforms, right? So you've basically scaled the ability to manipulate people exactly. incredibly effectively. Exactly. And that is that is something we should be talking about. And, and what do you want to do about it? That's the question. Your, I think, well, I'll tell running? you what, I think we need to hold corporations' feet to the fire. And this is going to get uh, continue with this next segment, which we're going to talk about the gamification of one-year-olds and their attention. Uh, but I think we need, I think these companies, and this is what Scott Galloway is saying as well. A time we of also have to hold individuals who do this stuff. See, it's, you're, you're, you're blaming strictly the platform. You're not blaming the actors. Well, who, you mean you can't Larry Page? Who do so, you mean? No, uh, no, 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 I mean okay, whoever wait, the wait, schmuck wait. is who makes that, that, that bad thing that goes to kids. Think you've about got, the platform. You've got to go to that as state. person. As a state, you have to enact laws to prevent bad things. As a platform, you have to, laws are probably not the right, but enact rules and punish people. And right now, I think the issue, especially with, with this YouTube Facebook. thing, is that they're but not actually paying attention. The, they're not devoting the resources to police the platforms for these bad actors. Worse than that. They're Basically, actively I agree, abrogating I, the I responsibility agree. because of the holy grail of growth in the stock market. And you can say but that for on. Twitter. You can say that for Facebook. Growth is everything. And that's why they're abrogating their responsibility because it's financially important to them that they have this kind of user growth. They All need right, me, to let gamify. Me, let me come in and advocate for the devil here to both of you. Number number one, uh, I am what I'm trying to suggest here is you don't only go after the platform. There are actors who are manipulating the platform to do bad things. You've got to go after them. You can't just say the technologist should fix this. That's that. The law, the, the person who's doing the but, bad act. But don't, don't you agree with Stacey number, that number, the number platforms two, have a responsibility? Number two, number two, the platforms do have a responsibility. You're right, but you are way underestimating the difficulty that scale brings. Well, that's so the argument. I am Franken. not. Let's take, I am like, not I, let me finish, that, let me finish, but that is finish. why they're so... Let me finish this one. Let me finish this one. Okay. Let me finish this one. I got two against one here. Normally, I'm the interrupter, I know, but I got two against one here. Al Franken, how could you not have seen that Rubles had bought those ads? Well, come on. We all know that it's sophistication. They weren't looking for the signal of Rubles and political ads. It was only after the fact they said, oh, crap, Rubles and political ads, right? And there was no system in there that was built in. Scale is hard. Yes, scale is profitable, but scale is also hard. Scale is what enables your Aunt Mary to sell her jam. Scale is what enables us all to make videos and podcasts and make a living at it. Scale is what enables all this good stuff, but scale is also difficult. Now, should we hold them responsible? Yes, but in a reasonable way. And just saying everything is their fault, the darn platforms do this, while we're taking advantage of all the stuff, I, I don't think that's just being, I don't think it's being honest. And I also think it's just being productive because if you go after the platforms, somehow you've also gone after the bad actors who are manipulating the platforms. Actually, we are in league with the platforms against those guys, but we're not treating it that way. Okay, now I'm done. Okay, so couple things. One, when it's a money-making issue, these companies find it's worth their while to actually deal with their problems that are caused by scale. So we see this with things like crappy search results. Google, for example, comes in and is like, oh, hey, you know what? We're seeing a lot of people do these stupid how-to articles that are useless content. We're going to start downgrading those. Facebook does it too with- um, Upworthy. No. Upworthy. Thank you. I was like, the headline site. Yeah. Which, by the way, so, was started with the best of motivations, Upworthy was, I, and I, did the I worst know. to media. I know they're they're <laughs> lovely. But they're not evil, but they were gaming the system. So- You've got Define those things. Gaming. And Define those, gaming. Define no, gaming. But Google, you, no, 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 no. You're, you no. Know, she's right, Jeff. I mean, uh, link farms, demand media, time and time again. You're right. There are bad actors who say we're going to take advantage of the algorithm, make a lot of money, and when those things happen, Google is able to stop it. Well, me, That's why Matt let's, Cuts let's, has let's, a let's, job. Upworthy. Exactly. No, upworthy no, 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 no. Wait, Jeff. You said you let me. You system. said you let me finish, and you're pulling the upworthy straw man. Yeah. <laughs> well, Beep. the one who raised okay. Upworthy, it's a yeah, good example. Yeah, but don't use it as a okay. It's one so example. The, the rest of this is... to inform the public. Upworthy's motive was to use these techniques to inform Jeff, people and get them to get Jeff, stuff. I Jeff, think they went all off the Jeff, board. Jeff, I, I listen don't like to you. All right. don't, be, don't be mean. Okay, let me finish. After, okay, so they have made these efforts, but when it comes to things that are profitable in a way... 
that isn't significant to them and doesn't appear to have a lot of harm, I guarantee you they're going to start having people moderate the YouTube kids content after all this kerfuffle because it's not going to be worth it to them. But up until this point, up until someone pointed it out, they were content to let this go. And the reason they'll figure it out is because Disney and Nickelodeon are going to be like, uh, hello, your brand is being totally tarnished. And they're going to pull their content. So the point here is these guys, they are they are not benign. They understand scale is hard, but when they want to, they can address it. And so I don't think it's wrong to sometimes say, oh, guys, uh, you're letting a lot of crap through here and you need to fix it. It's not techno panic. It's a legitimate democratic way to like engage with a platform. All right, pause. Yeah, we, we, we agree. We agree. We agree. But there's two, there's two, one more second, Leo. All I'm saying is that in adi- if that's all you do, then that means that you blame the technology for everything. I say that in addition to that, you need two more things. One is you need to go after the actors who actually do the bad acts. And I don't hear a lot of that going on. Very hard to and do no, that. And, well, it's well, international. The problem is it's international and law enforcement. It's international. Let's acknowledge yeah. that number two is let's acknowledge that that this isn't that easy for the platform to say, oh, rubles and ads. Why didn't you know it's that? It's easier ahead? for the platform than for Interpol. Uh, I'm saying it all comes together. And I'm saying that we also as individuals, we have a responsibility to change the norms so we don't go supporting fights online and trolling. I think behavior. we all we agree. All of these things have to happen. But yes. I think Stacey's point is very well taken other. that if you want to be a platform, I agree with you. Them. No longer get to say, "Oh, we're just you know a common carrier. We're not responsible." I and I feel that many companies, you know, Twitter is a very good example. I think Facebook's a very good example. Google maybe a pretty good example. Many platforms just say, "You know, this we're just a carrier. It's not our fault." Let's take a break because uh, this conversation will continue, and we get to this. Uh, the, something is wrong. On the internet. And I, I think we've pretty much done it already, but go ahead. <laughs> well, I have to show you these videos, and uh, and I want to warn people that not to let your two-year-olds watch what we're going to do in a minute, because it's disturbing. And if you're, uh, if you, I don't think it's so disturbing that an adult will be harmed by it, but I hate to think of a little kid watching some of these things. We're going to take a break, come back with more. Uh, Jeff Jarvis, professor of journalism, University, University of New York. The, the master of the Socratic dialogue, Stacy Higginbotham, uh, journalist par excellence, Stacy on IOT.com, and I'm just the guy sitting in between them. Our show today brought to, <laughs> brought to you by Eero. Eero started in, what was it, about 2015, 2016, early 2016. I remember uh, reading about him and getting very excited and pre-ordering. Uh, it was the very first... Uh, com- consumer mesh system. There have been business systems designed to do this. In fact, we'd used some, but nobody ever thought of doing this in the house. Eero did, and it was brilliant. The idea of not a, not a Wi-Fi extender, but solving ev- you know m- increasingly worse Wi-Fi issues with a mesh Wi-Fi network that includes a base station and multiple access points was brilliant. Since then, they've learned from hundreds of thousands of systems. And one of the advantages of being the market leader is that means they know a lot about what makes Wi-Fi break and what makes it work. The second generation Eero is now out. Oh, I love it. I put an Eero and two beacons, the the little uh, satellite stations in my house. And it is it is the best Eero we've ever had. More speed, more range, same high-quality design. Actually, I think it's even more elegant the Euro beacons just plug into the wall. They have a little night light, so we, I put them in the halls, and it's very convenient. With the addition of the third 5 gigahertz radio, the second generation Eero is tri-band, and by the way, twice as fast as its predecessor, so you could do a lot more, watch more movies, listen to more music, surf and, and email to your heart's content. And they've added a thread radio, so now they can connect to low-power devices like locks, doorbells, other sensors, and more if you need more easy to add another beacon every 1500 square feet should have its own you plug it into a wall it's easy if there's an outlet there's wi-fi we have uh i i like euro so much that i gave my mom my original system uh went out to providence rhode island set it up for her uh and it really solved the problem she had as a uh, art studio out in the backyard that she couldn't get wi-fi she really loves listening to internet radio streaming internet radio 
including this show. And so now she can do that. We put a, I put an Eero out there and an Eero in her kitchen. I have myself, we have three Eros in our home. And I just, it's a set it and forget it. And Eero has so many nice features now, including uh, great parental control features. Uh, we, we can, you can identify every device that attaches to your network and associate it with a member of the household. So I have all of the things Michael uses, his phone, his computer, his tablet, in his account. And I can say, I can actually do it with the Echo. I could say, Echo, pause Michael's Wi-Fi. And suddenly he's offline. It's not, it, I, do it, I do it because I love him. We do it because we care. We actually have a set uh, time that the internet goes off, 10 p.m. Doesn't come back on until 9 the next morning. It also filters so he can't see stuff he, we don't want him to see on the internet. Really works very, very nicely. Uh, of course, the adult computers aren't filtered, but they're, well, they are because they're filtered against malware and other attacks. And the Eero automatically updates. The firmware gets updated all the time. I'll give you an example. You know about the crack vulnerability that, that uh, meant it was possible for a bad guy to snoop on your Wi-Fi. Within 24 hours of that being revealed, it was revealed on a Monday, by Tuesday, Eero had automatically put out, pushed out a fix to all of their customers. Nobody's that good. They're the best. Incredibly fast response time. Automatic updates. It's what you need, what you have to have in an IoT device, it, and it is the best router out there. S simply enough. iOS and uh, Android app makes it easy to set up, but also easy to control. No more dead zones. No more buffering. Wi-Fi that works. We've got free overnight shipping because I know you want it now. Eero, e -E -R -O com. Use the offer code TWIG. And uh, you might want to consider my example. If you've got family members who are complaining about their internet, it would be a very nice thing this Thanksgiving or this holiday season to go visit them and have a nice package of Eros wrapped up for them. E -E -R -O com. Get free overnight shipping with the offer code TWIG. Something is wrong on the internet. <laughs> so what's basically happening here is happening not just on YouTube, but everywhere. The idea that uh, videos are starting to be algorithmically generated with algorithmically generated titles and hashtags because people have observed that little kids, nonverbal little kids, are using tablets, watching YouTube, and some of them fairly benign, like this one. This is the Finger Family Song. Watching YouTube videos, enjoying them. And then um, mashing the next button or auto-playing to the next video. Now, this is the... I'll show you this because it kind of sets it up. This is the Finger Family. And some people might think this is a little creepy to begin with. Would you now There's when a lot you're of kids commercials out there, kids shows out there I consider creepy too, but the kids like them. Yeah, it's bright it's, colors. Kids are weird. Remember it's nonverbal, and it, and by the way, it's something a child of three or four identifies with. It's things they know: their family, their hands, their bedroom. Uh, so it's like any nursery song. It's you know it's very approachable, and by the way, it's very catchy. I couldn't stop singing it after I watched this video. Here's the song. We've gone to Fing Finger Family Park, where there's a giant hand and, and a boy and a girl on the hand dancing. It has a little bit of a Bollywood flavor to it. Daddy Finger, Daddy Finger, oh, it where does. are you? I'm guessing this must have originated in India or Daddy somewhere like that. By the way, the notice is still worse. Notice the subscribe to our channel suggested Little Miss Muffet nurf, Nursery Rhyme. Of course, something will auto play right after it. So that's the. I don't know if this is the original, but that's. It's kind of a benign example. It's a little creepy. They got parents and kids on fingers. Like, like I say, Barney's creepy. It's like Barney. Um, uh, what's what's that one with the the big the big roly poly beasts who walk in the colorful land? British one. Oh, Teletubbies. Yeah. Teletubbies. Yeah. yeah, that's creepy. And then there's this, there's creepy. another meme. Some of these, by the way, are created, not intentionally created creepy, like from 4chan and others. This is the meme of the wrong heads. So this is where Disney might get involved. There's Aladdin. Same song. And now different heads from the Aladdin movie are on there. And a little kid from a different Disney I don't actually think she comes from Disney at all. Is crying. She's another character. She's from Despicable Me. Who That's right. Despicable Me. Despicable Me. Yeah. 
So you could say, well, that's not so bad. That's teaching kids, I don't know. Getting, she's coming out to cry them. She's telling like them that that's the wrong head. Right. So I can see that. So this is this is not that bad. That's benign. Okay. Now we get creepy. You ready to get creepy? <laughs> and and we can't watch the whole thing. Uh, you can read uh, uh, the uh, article, James Bridles, which piece, is very long, uh, which is long on um, a medium. But this. So what's happened? This one has been generated. Now, humans have to create these. Uh, but he says small animation teams because it's very primitive animation can crank these out they're auto generated in terms of names and text so the name of this is buried alive outdoor playground finger family song nursery rhymes animation education learning video uh and this combines a lot of the stuff you might have seen oh we're gonna have a hamburger emoji fight now sorry no, their cheese is in the right spot. Well, they also, they're purple. Now, here comes the Hulk on a motorcycle. At McDonald's, by the way, featuring prominently here. Um, oh, actually, I, I jumped ahead, didn't I? No. I should, yeah, I should go to the beginning, which is the creepiest part. Here's the Joker walking along. He throws a can at a guy on a motorcycle. Oh, it's Spider-Man. Knocks him off. His motorcycle crashes. He picks up that creepy, creepy, creepy cry. He picks up a Spider-Man. Now here comes some creepy clown, does the same thing to the Hulk, knocks him out, picks him up, carries him off. Uh, then this is really creepy. This is a young woman sitting in her kitchen. It's Elsa. Who is it? Elsa? It's Elsa. From Frozen? Yeah. And She's then, just not dressed in her stuff. And then he sprays something on her and she passes out and he carries her off. Is that Punisher? Who is that? It's some... Is. Some cartoon character. Here's Purple Spider Girl. Death comes in with a scream mask and a scythe, knocks her out. Again, the scream. Now, I, the problem is because of the title on this, a parent might, and bright colors, and the listen to the music, yep. the playful music, a parent might very well accidentally let a kid watch this. Maybe they started with Daddy Finger. Now they've been buried alive, these characters, and they're dancing around them. But fortunately, this gets really creepy. Here comes baby heads on... I don't know what's going on here. Uh, another spider character in the Hulk with baby heads. Spot it. They call the police. The policewoman is going to come rescue police the people. Policewoman is been... also Elsa. Also Elsa. Well, but see, little kids, they go, oh, it's Elsa. And now the police have come in her Chevy pickup and she beats up all the bad guys the baby head people uh, dig up the characters everybody's free death gets a kick in the head <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know it's is this creepy? it seems creepy to me and I wouldn't want a, a one year old oh. to watch it it seems, no, it of seems course not. nightmare material and, and there's a they're, lot more They're definitely of this. worse. It's not the worst. I won't show you the worst stuff. But um, you wouldn't, I think, so you said, Stacy, you have a, a personal experience to relate to this? Yeah, so Anna, my daughter, she watches YouTube a lot. And she's actually really cautious about what she watches because she is, you know, we've had the debate about what you can't see, you can't unsee on the internet. Um, so every now and then, she comes across and there are characters. It is a creepy show that's like on Adult Swim or something. And they put these in the types of videos that she likes to watch. I think it was a Minecraft video. So it's not necessarily for kids. And this wasn't on YouTube Kids, but it just came through. Oh, that's and the other point. Sudden, this is not on just on regular YouTube. Yes. This is on the specially protected for kids that's only YouTube kids that's channel. That's the key of yeah. the problem here. And that's where Stacy's point before is right that you've got to if you're taking responsibility, you got to do it right. You can't f right. it up. Well, like in that. Google's messed up. I mean, so in in this case, that's a problem, but they also with their kids content, you know, once a kid is above 13 because and they're not under COPPA protection and Amazon does the same thing, they suddenly go into this world of like Oh, you're an adult now. Whereas many of us who have 13 year olds or have experienced 13 years olds would be like, not, uh, yeah. not really. No. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so my daughter like saw these things and like freaked 
out and she comes running to me and she's like, who are these creepy people? And apparently they're super popular, but they are. In fact, our 14 year old watches uh, some really creepy videos called hug me. I'm scared. Um, and there, there's an, it's an ironic, I think for that age. I don't know. Um, yeah. So what Bridal writes is the system is complicit in the abuse. He says YouTube and Google are complicit in the system. The architecture they have built to extract the maximum revenue from online video is being hacked by hacked in the sense of used by persons unknown to abuse children, perhaps not even deliberately, but at a massive scale. His point is there are millions of these. And he thinks that there is some responsibility uh, uh, that Google and YouTube have. Uh, but and it's, it would be nice. Oh, go on. Uh, I, I think that your point, Jeff, is well taken that given the volume of videos on YouTube, there's an issue. It's going to be very difficult to police this. But if you're if you're putting out a child safe product, that's where Stacey and I could, could agree more. That is where you say above all that you've got to go to the expense and you've got to have the scarcity to say that there's some structure that you can be near perfectly guaranteeing that it's child safe or else you're hurting your brand, you're hurting children, you're hurting um you're hurting uh, your partners. everything you have. You're hurting your partners, and, you're hurting everything you do. And then there's a was, separate oh, so, so all I'm saying is yeah we 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 absolutely agree there. The, 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 so that's where the scale thing doesn't really you're you're gonna limit the scale of it. You're it's gonna be limited size because you're gonna have quality. And we get back to quality and flight to quality is not a bad thing. Now can you do that with YouTube as a whole? That's where it becomes much more difficult. But, it's, uh, but but in terms of this, this limited project, yeah. It's the ongoing Disney. conversation we've had for the last few years about, and it, by the way, it's starting to, what's interesting, it's starting to migrate into the public sphere as well, the non-technical public sphere, about how this uh, f uh, free speech uh, democratization that the internet promised has kind of turned a little sour in some ways. Yes, but you see, that's the problem, Leo. Well, that's that's, well, that's where well, Michael people God. People are jerks. Yeah, and, but not all and, people you know, are jerks. Not Only all a small percentage, but, a thin layer. But now but, you're now you're throwing out the entire internet. No, no, no I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. But I, don't do that. I I feel like there you're are people. In in Jeff, you might you probably you and I probably agree, but this idea that there there are bad people or people who behave like jerks on the internet, that is always going to be the case. The mm -hmm. question is, I think we have to figure out how to deal with them. And ideally the platforms will take a, take a role here, not in a, you know, maybe not banning people or maybe establishing clear rules, but also give people on the platforms tools to avoid things. Well, they have those tools and that's, well, I know. I mean, YouTube Kids has blocking and everything. And I think that that's the rationale. That's the justification Facebook and Google and others use. Well, our users will curate it. Our users will will do it. Uh, our users will kill fake news. But I don't see any evidence that that's happening. Well, the, right. And so that's, and that's where we get into the questions of scale and abuse of the scale. And that's, I mean, it's basically people hacking the algorithms. And well, we've got to figure out. Stacey? Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, hey, go ahead. I'm sorry. No. We, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm on lag, so I didn't hear you. Go keep keep going. Sorry. We have to figure out how to recognize that when it happens and put a stop to it as quickly as possible. And that, I mean, that was Matt Cutts' job, you know, for search. So I think we just have to figure that out across, especially across. Tell parents YouTube to kids. stop using YouTube as a babysitter. <laughs> So that's, yes, but YouTube isn't necessary. I mean, perfectly good parents put oh, yeah. a phone in front of their kids. Yeah, I let my for kids watch Teletubbies, yeah. The difference I mean, was you could trust if it was on PBS or it was BBC, you could kind of trust it. Or you bought a CD-ROM and you knew what was on it. Yeah. Um, uh, and I even phone. edited it out the bad phone. stuff in Bambi. I made a special videotape of Bambi without the bad stuff. I think Disney's going to arrest you now. Yeah, Disney doesn't like when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was for personal consumption only. So I, yeah, I, I think I think that the, the, Stacey, the, the the larger issue, which I don't think we've kind of dealt with, is the full implications of scale, right? And I'm going to pardon me here. Get, get your get your drinking glasses ready, folks. Um, if you go back to Gutenberg, mm -hmm. ah! the problem is sorry. The problem was that you had a scale that was one scribe, one book, one year, 
and and society could deal with that. And you went to people who read the books out loud to you, and you knew what they were, and they were, they were guaranteed. They're fine. Then suddenly, oh my God, all these books. And Erasmus says there's too many of them. It's going to ruin society. We can't handle this. Right? Then we cope with norms. We cope with systems to grapple with that. Now we're at an exponentially larger scale. And the scale is wonderful on the one hand. It opens up the possibility that we can all publish and all make podcasts and all these wonderful things. But then inevitably come spammers, which is first the economic piece. And that, you're right, is where the company is motivated to hire Matt Cutts to fix the spam. It's an economic problem both ways around. But yeah, then the, but next first, thing that happens, it, the next thing that happens are the really nefarious actors. At first, though, this is the problem. And this is where people are complaining. The first reaction the company has is, oh, good, we're going to make even more money. The, and, and uh, they uh, only are, only yeah. when their feet are put to the fire do they stop this stuff. Okay, so it's our, part of our job in the ecosystem is to put their feet to the fire, which, which I agree with. But, but how we do that? I'm part of the, I, I helped start the Open Brand Safety Network where we're identifying the worst of the worst of the worst of the fake news sites. There is money going from major advertisers still to those places because nobody has put their feet to the fire to say, hello, what Sleeping Giants did with advertisers in Breitbart, we need to do it large scale now. So I'm agreeing with all this. My problem with this entire discussion though is that if, if you stop at blaming the platform and expecting they can fix it, you'll both be disappointed and be harming the good that can come from it. Just like you know, okay, they don't have to Facebook. fix it, but they don't have to be complicit in it. And I feel right now they're complicit in it. I, I see that's where that's where I disagree. I don't think I don't think there's somebody sitting there saying, "Ooh, if we get rid of this horrible, creepy stuff, we could lose uh, $100,000. No, I think, I think it's no, what we talked about last week. They're saying it's, it's, not, they're it's, saying it's not worth our time to deal with this. Or they're doing uh, what Twitter did. Yeah, we there. talked about this last week where the guy, the safety guy go from Twitter goes to Twitter and says, there's all these spots and spam and Russian actors. And Twitter says, yeah, but we need the growth numbers right now. Don't you think that happens all the time? It. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, they are complicit. We know they're complicit. But, but they, all of them, I don't think so. I think that Facebook and Google are at a higher plane. I don't think they sit there and say we can make money off of crap. I think they realize at some level that the crap is damaging to them and damaging to what they do and to their missions. They are, are they not good uh, at dealing with it. No, they're not, and that's the problem. Yeah. And, and do we need to hold their feet to the fire to make them do it? Yes. But the, the problem I have is this cynicism that says, oh, the only reason they're on these platforms is to make money. And they'll do anything to make money, and they'll put all this crap up there. I, I, that's 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 naive. And that, I'm not yeah, saying I hear the only that reason you, they're doing this the is actually to make money. You think the only reason they're doing it is to make money? Yeah. Do you really believe that so. Mark Zuckerberg cares about connecting yes. the world? Yes, I he, absolutely he may, do. And I believe. I believe is, that Larry. I believe that Larry and Sergey absolutely be, absolutely believe that they are they are making the world's knowledge accessible. Absolutely. But they are there to make money. As publicly traded companies, they are there to we make all, money. We all are. We're there here to eat too. Yeah, part of part of you know, and even and 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 I say we're not rich people, but even rich people uh, then think they have more power than they have, and try to uh, look at Ricketts closing DNA info and LAS and all that this week. Um, you know, yeah, we are human. And and we have to check our motives. But yes, I absolutely believe that. I have no problem believing this. If, if I didn't believe that, I sure as hell wouldn't have taken their money to start the News Integrity Initiative. I wouldn't be, if I didn't believe that Google were essentially good, I wouldn't believe it's worth being on a show every week about them. Oh, see, I'm on the show because I, I feel like someone has to act as a check against their power. I think it's both. But if I didn't believe there was something good essentially here, it wouldn't be worth checking them. Then screw it. I believe there's something good here that's worth preserving, and that's their stewardship of the internet. And that's what worries me is they've got to make sure they're responsible stewards. Okay. I can agree with keeping them responsible stewards. That makes sense. There is also, though, the issue of scale. I mean, sure, uh, Erasmus didn't like all the books Gutenberg was putting out, but we're at a much different scale now. Uh, it's global. It's uh, it's pervasive. In fact, scale's the problem. It's hard to correct because of scale. Scale's the benefit and the problem, but it was the same then. We'll figure it out. If, if the problem is, if, if you don't, do you do you give up hope that we can figure it out? No, I. but I do, I do think that we can't, that their, their motives are not always pure, and we have to realize that, and we have to question that. Because I think otherwise, you can, I agree with you, Stacey. You can assume their motive is profit. 
if it's not, then they're mismanaging their. If that's company. all, if that's all you presume it is, then I, I'm not no, saying it's all, but there. But you, that I mean, matters. It, the mix about, matters. Well, okay. Let me matter. tell you something. Mark Zuckerberg is not, and his company are not al uh, optimizing the news algorithm for benefit benefit to society. That would that's not they that's are not their they are op that's right. They're, they're optimizing the news they're algorithm for engagement and money. Right? They're, no, they you would can, say that Mark they're going, say, they would say uh, I want to that they're listening people. to what the people want. They're giving them that. Yes, engagement. You were responsible. So they can make I more money. I think that's money. a bit of a cop-out, but that's what they would say. Yeah, but that's the point, is that Mark can say all the things he wants to say about his lofty goals and ambitions, but in fact, the news algorithm is not optimized for lofty goals and ambitions. It's optimized to make money, as, as with any company. It's but also optimized. Here's the confluence. The confluence of... Late stage capitalism with immense power, computational power, with immense computational data and a critical mass of, of, of knowledge and data. And you combine all those, you've got a toxic stew that is optimized in a way that is bad for society. Okay, wait, wait, wait. That's where I think you're going way overboard. This is where I'll bring in Mike Godwin. Mike Godwin should have a new law here. And and he's been he's been screaming on Twitter for the last week or so more eloquently. I know, than I started I can following him. I know I about why we're that that, that what, what do we, he is arguing the evidence that we're in a moral panic. His definition of a moral panic was that when you're when you have to convince people that it's all awful and they don't really feel that way, then you're trying to instill a moral panic. And his argument is that most people keep using Facebook and they're fine with Facebook. And I repeat my challenge before: go through your Facebook feed and find what's so ugly and awful and society ruining in it. It's not there. It's not there. I think it's Do more subtle. Do bad actors than that. manipulate this? Yes. Are there bad people? Are there trolls that I hate on Twitter? Do I wish Twitter would stop enabling women to be harassed? Yes. Do they need to have higher standards? Absolutely. Is do not do not be evil good enough? No. Be good. Jeff, is, if, it has to be the new standard. If your standard for damage is whether people like it or not, then we should just have McDonald's well, food served at every meal. That's the standard meal. for any product on earth, Leo. Is do people like it or not? Any product. I That's agree. your starting standard. But, yeah. Is there a market for it? That's a every single product we make, including books. All right. So, but, but it doesn't what mean Leo's, it's healthful. What Leo's it doesn't mean some of these are made things that are It doesn't mean it's good for society. It doesn't mean it's healthful. Yeah. That's it, how newspapers are pe sold, Leo. People like crap. Yeah, but well, fortunately, I the think, magazines. I think your mindset it does come from that generation where newspapers were published by people who had. A higher felt a higher mission. Uh, where I could man, new, man well, I can introduce you to lots of publishers. Not all. Who I think are not are, all. Well, the New York Post. You can't the, say I the think, Post has a higher worse, mission. I How think did, it's okay, worse than wait. much of Silicon Valley. But I think the New York Times and the Washington Post. Uh, I think Dean Besquet and uh, I think they have they I think have a, a sense of societal obligation that's high. Maybe not the publisher, but the but the editorial staff that of good papers have a higher. Well, sense. who's making the money? Well, and there may not be making. See, that a was lot the problem. We and we in editorial just said, "Oh, that that money stuff. Somebody else will handle that." We didn't take responsibility for it. We didn't. No, we can't stand above that. We we were well, awful. But that's the we way. Were our that's the way it was supposed to be. Was a division of labor, and that the and and we try to do that here. The editorial side is not impinged upon by the money making side, and it led to poor stewardship from us on the editorial side. And we didn't take responsibility for the decisions being made. And that's how we ended up in clickbait land. Don't you think it's worse now? I mean. Don't you think yeah. if you, I mean, I admit Maybe. this wasn't a paragon of virtue, but I think it was a lot, it was a lot better model than what we've got today. There's Zoom nobody at Facebook, all all? there's nobody at Facebook arguing, I, well, maybe there is, I don't know, arguing, well, we got to, we got to do something about this. Oh, I, oh, I, I think, there, I think there are, I think the problem is, no, it's scarier than that in a way, Leo. Here's, here's the thing I've seen, and I've seen this again and again in their public pronouncements. We think, oh, they know how to do this. They're just choosing not to make money. No, the problem is it, it's bigger than them. They don't know how to do it. They don't know how to fix this. Otherwise, they fix it. They don't know how. That's what's scarier, right? Is that that's what scale brings. Um, I think there's pressure on them not to fix it. I think there's economic pressure on uh, them not to fix it. Go I ahead, think they Stacey. honestly don't know. I think, we, I think we impute a lot more brilliance and ability in them than they have. Well, then Same it's a runaway train with no conductor. No, no, this no, is the, this is called progress in the future, and some things are going to go right, and some things are going to go wrong. And the problem is, don't lose sight of the things that are going right. There's a tremendous amount that's right about the internet, and this discussion is entirely throwing that out with the bathwater. That's that's what I fear. That's what I hear the discussion all around right now is, oh my God, the internet is broken, the internet is horrible. No, 
but you use it every day. You're not bombarded with crap every minute Jeff, of every day. I don't, You're using it I don't think everyone thinks the internet is broken or horrible. I think people are asking legitimate questions about what the implications are when their decisions are manipulated by social platforms, when these platforms abdicate their responsibility in certain areas, and how we're going to handle that and how we should hold them responsible, the role that these platforms, understanding the role these platforms play in our lives and the implications. That's not a bad thing to say. It's- I agree with you, Stacey. I agree, but that's not, that's not the tone that I'm seeing. If you go to my my friends at The Guardian, they have gone full, utter techno panic. And, 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 so, and there was a columnist they had, columnist they had two days ago, whose whole lead was, I hate the internet. I hate everything I, about the internet. I hate the internet. I'm is, hearing that, that tone is, constantly, constantly. That is the way these things get debated. I mean, look at look at what happens with things about, you know, look at the, the soda tax in New York City. You have people in either extreme and then you have people debating throughout the spectrum. And so, yes, do extreme viewpoints get people to pay attention to an issue? Yes. Then they will come in and have these discussions. And I, I understand your worries about a techno panic, but I feel like you're constantly bringing – you run all the way down that slippery slope and you're like, techno panic. But then you come back up and you're like, okay, I agree with you on this. But, but you're kind yeah, of so doing I'm just the saying opposite. how we have this discussion. The problem is that I see the discussion. Look at, look at the congressional hearings. The, we're you're having smart people this discussion like Al right now. But people, smart people like Al Franken, right, who knows better. The whole rubles thing, it was for, it was for show, right? And it was, it, was, it was scoring points against not only Facebook, but I the net, I, and that's a guy I mean, who that knows is, better and a guy who's smart. And that's where it's happening right now. And the result can be what we see in the EU is you can get horrendous decisions like the right to be forgotten. You can get decisions like, like charging the platforms $500 million every time something wrong is there. You can get to the point where, where uh, we expect them to decide what's right and wrong. We, we're seeing the fruits of this. And that's, that's, this is not a, 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 an idle worry it's we are empowering the politicians to do bad things to our beloved internet when we we talk crap on the internet all the time and we don't also remind them of the good that we have to preserve the good. Let me, instead of using the soundbite from Al Franken, give you a quote from the article he wrote in your favorite publication, The Guardian. Um, oops, I've gone I've gone away from it. Uh, and the title is "We Must Not Let Big Tech Threaten Our Security, Freedoms, and Democracy." This is an opinion piece. And uh, he says, last week's hearings demonstrated these companies may not be up to the challenge they've created for themselves. In some instances, it seems they failed to take common sense precautions to prevent the spread of propaganda, misinformation, and hate speech. The platforms at Big Tech, and I actually think this is pretty astute, the platforms at Big Tech have designed may now be so large and unruly that we can't trust the companies to get it right when they do start paying attention. If you have 5 million advertisers a month using your highly sophisticated, nearly instantaneous ad platform, can you ever really know who all of them are? Can you ever... So, so, so he's, stay there. He's answering his to, question, by the way. Okay, he says, well, what do you want to happen then? So, so what's, what's the answer? Do we, we prevent people from advertising? So Aunt Mary can't sell her jam? No, that we have they can actually... Large... They can develop... Okay, Jeff. They can actually develop algorithms that pay attention to signals that are important to question to say hey this looks suspicious maybe we punt this up to someplace else franklin's, so, franklin's being positive here he's saying but he's saying with great power goes great responsibility and these companies have to be held uh, to account i think that's fair reasonably so it cannot be it will not ever be the same as running the new york times and we don't want it to be because then because you and i couldn't get into the new york times right that's this show would not right? be on mainstream broadcast. Right. And so and so if we want a controlled, safe, completely cleaned up atmosphere, what's the what's the level of responsibility? He's you hold not them saying to? it needs to be controlled and safe. He's saying that they need to put things in place to make this to to make them not complicit. So they see when things are going wrong. It's basically like saying, hey. You built this awesome city, but you know what? Maybe you should put some street lights in because sometimes it gets dark and your people are going to want to see what's happening. That's what again, he's saying. We're agreeing not, about that. We're agreeing about that, but 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 it's very important to have a discussion of where is that line. Well, and, and, and let's 
and what the implications are and who gets kicked off. Well, I saw a list of, uh, you know, of, 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 of unreliable sites that shouldn't be advertised on. Well, some odd things got onto that list. And what, what happens when Breitbart ends up that list? And, you know, wh where are you in this world? This is not easy. This is really hard. And again, I, I don't yes. think we should presume that they know how to do this. They're just refusing to, which is, kind of, I think what Franken's saying, which I agree with, is maybe they don't know how to do it. But let's acknowledge how hard this task is. It's really hard. Everyone, and he to says. to say they need to figure it out. That's, that's also part of this. He's saying you can't just. I mean, it'd be like if someone created Frankenstein. You created Frankenstein. Now we got to figure out how to how to rein him in. It how to make it, sure that he doesn't, doesn't go terrorize the population. Doesn't help anyone to say, "Oh, it's just it's very hard to keep control of Frankenstein." And danger, danger, <laughs> folks, danger, danger. So that's exactly what Iran says and China says. And you're setting a precedent and setting a mechanism that we we have to. We have well, what to is, are you suggesting, Jeff? There should be no regulation. No, at I'm all? not suggesting that at all. I'm suggesting have the discussion from saying the internet is a good. Let's protect the good of it. Here's that's the, the here's that's the, that's the question. Matt Cuts has the discussion. Oh, here are the questions. Than the way, here are the questions. The Frank and says, good. "Yeah, we agree." We all agree there's good stuff there. How did, here are the questions Franken says we have to think about. How did big di big tech come to control so many aspects of our lives? How is it oh, using that's our so low. that's right there. That's loaded as hell. Does it control my life? That's that's fundamentally patronizing and, cons and, and insulting to the citizens who vote. That's, that's the exact attitude that, that says, Jeff. oh, the technology you makes us do bad things. No, a few bad people do bad things using the technology. Big no. difference. No, there is social redlining. There is the use of this data to decide on whether or not to hire people. There are real world implications. And so is it controlling your life in like a scary mind control way? No, but it is narrowing your choices in ways that people don't it broadens necessarily your understand. choices in tremendous ways you never had before as well. You can go to LinkedIn okay, and get jobs you never could have found. I can see more cool stuff, but... And, and I'm aware of that, but I'm unaware of the bad stuff that's happening, the, the punishments. And I think that lack of awareness is really important to talk about. And that's what I think we should be having a debate about. That's where we should be shining the light of transparency that we all are so excited about as journalists onto these platforms saying, hey, Who's using your stuff? What data do you collect? What do you, it's exactly, what shadow profile do we this have? This is exactly the, we agree okay, about so that. We all agree about that. That first question, you're right, a little loaded. Second question, how is big tech using our personal information to strengthen its reach and its bottom line? Are these companies engaging in anti-competitive behavior that restricts the free flow of information and commerce? He says, this is a net neutrality issue too. Are they failing to take simple precautions to respect our privacy and protect our democracy? Simple precautions. Not We're not asking... Impossible uh, things, and finally, what role? I don't role, know if we want them to do our democracy, but okay. Well, <laughs> what? Well, what role should these companies play in our lives, and how do we ensure transparency and accountability from them going forward? So, there's two different burdens here. There's a. I agree with you, Jeff. If you feel like technology is controlling your lives, the burden is on you, not the technology. So, there is definitely a burden on the individual, but I think that it's re reasonable for us as a society, through our government, to ask these companies. Um, you know, to be to preserve competition, to protect privacy. Uh, I don't think those are unreasonable things to protect our security. Those are reasonable things to ask a company to this do. This is the same government that just today tried to for is trying to force Time Warner to sell CNN out of spite. The same government. Well, that's the, that's who you want to regulate the speech. That's the fear. So that's and that, I know that, I sound like a libertarian. I'm not. In. No, and I I have covered politics forever. I have dealt with the net neutrality debate, for example, over several successive FCCs, including, I was going to say Colin Powell, Michael Powell. <laughs> Michael Powell, yeah. But this is, this is the fundamental compromise we make when we have the government enact laws. We vote in a group of people who feel the way we feel or the opposite of the way we feel, the way politics goes now. And we have them craft laws that other people may decide to enact differently. And that is the risk we take with a democracy and the well, ability to vote people in and out. Part of the pressure we put back out. on is to decide what should be law and shouldn't be law. And if I also, go back to the EU, the EU, I think, has already gone way overboard. Possibly. And I fear that here. There, but there, but there's also the risk, you have to acknowledge, of a backlash if these companies don't start to take some responsibility. Amen. It That's why go, I press too. It could go I very agree. far in the opposite direction. And all this great internet stuff 
would not be. Amen. A, yeah. Amen. That's exactly what's happening. I think that's what Michael Godwin's point is now. We've gone that, too far. We're going to lose. Yeah, we're going to lose. They didn't do enough. Listen, I've been arguing that too. Right? I'll, I can give you chapter and verse about how I pressured them and, and well, argued. With them it would be right a now. good thing for them to but, do something before people start to say, well. Yeah, they should have set an entirely new standard for transparency yeah. and political advertising, for example. Yeah. They should go way beyond what's required of TV. They should be releasing every single political ad in a way that's searchable, with an API, with all of the, the targeting data. They should be doing all of that. They should have done that before anybody even breathed the idea of legislation. They should have seen this coming. They weren't smart enough to. Same with this porn thing. Same with another story we have up on the rundown. They, they're, they're not smart enough. This is why I've argued they should hire journalists so they can just get a sense of public responsibility. I agree with all of that. They have They are messing it up. They're messing up our internet, and that's why I fear. But I also think there's. I need to keep pressure back on the idea of us turning into EU regulation. That scares me worse. I actually think GDPR is is decent regulation. I don't. I, know. I mean, I don't want to get. I don't want to get into GDPR. Right All right, now. let's so take a break. Time. We'll have more. Yeah. Re rest, <laughs> relax, get a. You know, just take a nap. Ding, stuff ding, next, ding. like, Back to your like drink some like coffee. Planes coming down and <laughs> fights and things. And it's really, you know, it's it's really an interesting time. Um, I, f I feel like there is. So there's something brewing. It's not Skynet. I'm not saying it's Skynet, but there's something brewing right now in the capabilities of tech, big tech companies that is new, unique, and and can be a little worrisome. Don't and and it I just can also be magnificent. It could be well, and there's a lot of magnificent stuff. But in order to keep that, as we said, to keep the magnificent stuff flowing, we've got to make sure that we and they responsibly handle the stuff that's damn damaging. Yeah, but all I'm saying, Leo, is that is that for those of us who are around technology and are, are savvier about it. It's up to us to defend the good stuff because the, the, that's not happening now. That's that's the that's that's we have we have our special responsibility to do both. Absolutely, do both and be critical of them. And I, if you only spend an hour so being critical of them, you're being. Me to do. I get it now. So you, you're pushing a little harder on the other side because and there are plenty of people of luddites of non technically savvy people who are pushing hard in the other direction. So That's you feel why like I wrote public parts, because I said there are plenty of protectors of privacy. I am well confident that privacy will be well represented okay. as an issue. That's fair. But, but sharing is not well represented yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so we, we, as usual, agree in all sub matters of substance here. It's, <laughs> it's a matter a, it's, of tone it, and a matter of priority and a matter of what we each fear is different. Yeah, fair enough. But now you got to make some money because that's all you really care about, Leo. That's, that's all, all I care you about. Care about is making money. Somebody says, You're "But Leo, you read ads." But I read ads so, so you guys don't have money. to. I, here's the here's the <laughs> Chinese wall right here between you and this following ad. <laughs> our show is our show is brought to you today. By the way, you know this is a big challenge for us about what should we accept ads for companies like Microsoft and Apple. Uh, uh, companies that we directly cover or not? That's an interesting question too. I mean. And, one we fortunately have not had to answer because Microsoft and Apple have never come calling. Our show today... <laughs> <laughs> hint, hint. Google, never. No. Our show today brought to you by... It's called This Week in Google. You could have, you could own it. Would you Google. take an ad for Google? <laughs> we actually... Have, the only ads we've ever taken for Google, and I feel good about it, are the Summer of Code. Yeah. Because that's a, that's a good thing. And uh, I'm not sure... I think it would be very difficult for us to take Pixel 2 ads, for instance. I think that would be a real challenge. Well, meanwhile, talking about something like uh, a mortgage company that does it better for, in a way that technologists would love, I think that's completely appropriate. Um, so get to your so, ad now. I'll stop interrupting. Yeah. No, no, no. I No, it's all part and parcel of the same thing. Our show is brought to you by Quicken Loans. They created something called Rocket Mortgage that answers a real need, a need that I felt last time we bought a house, we went to a bank. First of all, went to a bank. That's nothing anybody ever wants to do. Second, going through the papers in my attic, in my file cabinet, at work, trying to find my bank's payments, bank statements, pay stubs, all that paperwork. Never had everything I needed, so we had to fax stuff and fax more stuff, and then they wanted more stuff. So we have, it was just like this endless, painful process. Death by a thousand paper cuts. Then along comes Rocket Mortgage. I'll tell you, the next time I'm doing it with Rocket Mortgage. Quicken Loans, they know a little bit about this. The number two lender in the country, $92 billion in home loans out there. Number one in customer satisfaction, thanks to J.D. Power and their surveys. For seven consecutive years in primary mortgage origination, for four consecutive years in mortgage servicing, they're the best. And I tell you what, 
going forward, they're even better because a Rocket Mortgage Rocket Mortgage gives you the confidence you need when when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your home loan because it's a transparent process. You will understand every step of the way. You'll see it happen, and it happens in minutes. In minutes. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. Plus, no paperwork, none at all, because they have trusted financial trusted partners with all the big financial institutions. All you have to do is give them some basic information. They say, is this you? Yes, give us permission to ask the bank for your uh, pay statements or whatever. Yes. Then, based on your income, assets, and credits, they'll crunch those numbers, and they'll give you a home loan, all the options for which you qualify. You choose the down payment, the rate, the term, and you're done. You're approved in minutes at the open house. You show the realtor, we're approved. I love the big button on there. It says, download the approval letter and print it out. You're approved. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Apply simply, understand fully, and mortgage confidently. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLSConsumerAccess.org number 3030. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash twig. Rocketmortgage.com slash twig. Maybe you're not buying today, but do bookmark that so that you will be ready if that house comes along. Rocketmortgage.com slash twig. Twig. <sighs> I like this. Google's adding wait times for restaurants. That's a nice feature. I wonder uh, how they, they actually know that. Have they already done that? Uh, Austin does it. They have the, the popular times. I've seen the popular they do busy times. Time. Okay. They have popular times, which is different from wait time. Yeah. Okay. The TSA in Austin Airport actually oh, uses yeah. Wi-Fi signals from someone's yeah. phone. So maybe yeah. they're doing that. So this is, well, that's really, that's how they do it? Well, that's interesting. That's, yeah. There's a data collection, huh? So they're going to do it for, Google uh, published a blog post yesterday that says, skip the line restaurant wait times on search and on maps. So this is in addition to popular times. Um, plan your visit. People sp typically spend 45 minutes to two hours here. Peak wait time up to one hour, 45 minutes from 8 to 9 p.m., that's the red bar there. Wait times for a million sit-down restaurants around the world that allow walk-ins. So it's not for reservations. It's if you just walk in the door. And, uh, and, and you tap, you, you could tap on the hour bar and you'll see the wait time for that period, typical wait time. Wait, so is there assumption? Oh, sorry. Based on his, anonymized historical data. Huh. So do they know how, like, wait time varies tremendously depending on how many people are in your party, for example. Oh, so they don't, I'm like, they don't seem to be that granular. Yeah, it just seems... You know, what, you know what I think of at moments like this? Is the Seinfeld episodes that could never happen. Yes. The, the, the Chinese, Chinese restaurant the Chinese food is restaurant. Uh, such a great episode. Talk about nothing happening. They're, the whole show is them waiting in line. I just put it in the rundown. Um, <laughs> right, the fact that, 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 that you, you would now know that you shouldn't be waiting there, George... <laughs> it would it would kind of just ruin the whole thing ruins the whole thing but you know oh. i think there's probably probably other material i wish seinfeld did a show I, there i wish there were a show like that today i don't know if there is but uh the chinese Isn't restaurant you can watch this on youtube <laughs> oh it's only four and a half minutes but you get the idea the whole sh the whole show is them is it Hulu that has Seinfeld, or was it somebody? This is YouTube, but you can't. Our garbage trucks, garbage cans, and garbage men. You're never going to stop crime. We should at least be clean. You know what's interesting? That was like this podcast. Yeah, yeah I was about to say, George. You George, be on the show with George, us. you fit fit right in. We didn't talk about this last week. The rogue Twitter employee who's shut down Donald Trump's account. I feel like that maybe you didn't. Sure. I'm surprised the name hasn't come out. I want uh, between that and the woman who gave the finger to the to the, the these are two uh, social media heroes these days. Yeah. So the woman uh, who was bicycling when uh, Trump's motorcade went by on the way to the golf course and gave the motorcade the finger got fired because she put the picture on her social media page. I guess on her Facebook page. It became her profile picture. And the company, which is coincidentally or not a, co a military contractor, uh, fired her. And now the latest is she's received several hundred thousand job offers. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird world we live in. For the, for the, for the person who killed the account for 11 minutes, uh, my joke was that I want to hold a Twitter tape parade. Uh, uh, you know, I just want to, you, you, you want to know who it is. I'm surprised that hasn't come out. And yet, really shocked. and yet, isn't it a little disturbing? It is. It is. <laughs> Ultimately. 
but as a, as a as a kind of moment of of um, civil disobedience of sorts. The person lost their job. Well, no, the they person was price. on the way out. That's what happened. I That's think true. they did. This was their yes. last. The story went out. This was this person's last day, and as a gesture on their last day. But yeah, I think this would be a similar situation where they would probably get a lot of job offers. Although I wouldn't want to offer a job to somebody who would do something like that, to be honest. Well, so this person was a contractor. And oh, what's, you know yeah, more what's about it than I do. distressing oh. is that they, they could do this it. Person, that, yeah, they had access to an account that, you know, at one point was close to starting war with uh, North Korea. So yeah. I'm like, oh, that feels like perhaps lack security. And and that to me was the big. I agree. Yes, it was funny, yeah, but that was kind of like. And then the, other, the other question that went through my mind, well, it's could funny. the same person have tweeted on the president's behalf? But Twitter was quick to say no. No, they don't have access to tweet and they don't have access to DMs. Okay. So read DMs. Oh, Sorry. God. They don't have DMs access would to be even worse. Yeah. DM Kim Jong-un. You little... <laughs> Rocket boy. Rocket boy. Um, I would go like ahead. Fire rocket us. End. Fire one. Come on. Go ahead. Oh, boy. Go ahead. Ooh, I, Trudeau and Macron's twi tweets, DMs about Trump. That would be hilarious. Oh, Lord. Oh, that would be. Yeah, really? They uh, wield a lot of power, these Twitter guys. These twits. These this was just some temporary customer service guy, right? That's a common problem. People think Twitter and Twitter the same thing. They're not. <laughs> God. By the way, Twit preceded Twitter. Oh, like quite a while. You're right. By yes, by a lot. How long have you been? Not doing a lot, Twit? but a couple of years. And I interviewed Ev Williams at the time, and I said, "Ev, why'd you name your company Twitter?" Because he knew about us. Because remember, prior to Twitter, it was Odeo, which was a podcast network, and we were one of his top podcasts. So he compl so he knew about us and still called his company Twitter. He told me at the time, "Well, I didn't think either one of us was going anywhere." <laughs> <laughs> if he'd called it he was half reader right. would you have had a problem i don't know it's just so close to twit and people confuse it all the time well that's not a terrible thing getting confused for twitter well, it is if an advertiser confuses you and says i'm gonna buy some ads on twitter on twit i like that leo let me get some twitter ads people used to think that i was the uh, owner of uh, buzzfeed Oh, yeah, because Buzz Machine is your blog. Buzz Machine. Yeah. Yeah, oh. people was, oh, this is Jeff Jarvis. Oh, you have a Jeff, Jeff Jarvis, creator of BuzzFeed. Oh, no. dear. Oh, dear. I do, I do not have these issues. There are not many Higginbotham's out there. Not true. I think there's a Higginbotham Steel in the UK. There is Higginbotham's, a bookstore in India. Good. Um, I get lots of pictures oh, really? of it. That's good. There is a famous astronaut, um, Joan Higginbotham. Um, she's got a Wikipedia page. Oh, I wish his name, I wish her name was Harvey Higginbotham. That would be a good name. There's a judge. There's a famous. If you have a player. boy, will you name him Harvey? I'm, I'm not having any more children. And no. <laughs> enough is enough. <laughs> no, no Harveys. No more kids. Harvey Higginbotham. Did you not hear how often I travel? Harvey Higginbotham. That would be such a good name. Oh God. It, I forgot. Is this Andrew's name or your name? Uh, oh, my name? It's not your maiden name. It's my name. name. That's it my is your maiden name. name. Oh, okay. So you own it. Andrew has, yeah. You've Andrew had it your has whole a totally life. different name. Your yes. whole life you've had that name. Mm -hmm. And my dog has that name. Hello, dog. What's your dog's full name? Sophie the Terrible Higginbotham. The, you you got to give a dog a middle name. The Terrible. The Terrible? Okay. That's her middle name. <laughs> Are you going to go, next time you're in Vegas... Are you going to take a ride on Navia? It's a French oh, I wouldn't have flash. French startup, yes. self-driving startup. It's got a little shuttle, eight passengers. There is a safety driver, I'm sad to say. Oh. Yeah. So I don't well, it's the world's most boring job, by the way. It's yeah. a self-driving. It's the largest self-driving project in the U.S., even though it only goes on a 0.6-mile loop. <laughs> How fast does it go? <laughs> downtown. It's downtown, so it's not fast. LiDAR, so, GPS, V2I, vehicle. Oh, that's that thing we were talking about, vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle infra infrastructure mm -hmm. that will let it communicate with sensors embedded in the Vegas traffic signals. Um, oh, I'm sad there's a safety driver. Google's starting to give rides to people without a safety driver, you know. Well, wait, hold Ooh. on, because L.A., I have, I have relevant information. So, uh, L.A., Las Vegas, 
I went there and I actually saw and spent time in their innovation district and wandered around with their head of technology and innovation, who is actually going to be on the podcast next week as nice. my guest. Um, and I learned so much about smart cities and how they're actually implemented. And the guy who is in charge of this, his name is Michael Sherwood. You should have him on your show because he is the geekiest geek who is so fun. And he's done everything from give an um, Amazon Echo skill. So you can actually on the Echo show watch city council meetings, but you can always also ask it to ask you or tell you, sorry, here we go. Madam A, what is, you know, where should I play baseball today? And it'll give you the like city parks that have oh, baseball. Oh, that's awesome. So he's built all that. And Love now that. they're talking about creating like uh, roads, like lighting variable lane roads where you like light up the roads based on traffic patterns. Oh, so go this way, go that way. We're that's back yeah. to Seinfeld once again. This is what Kramer did when he took it, when he, when he sponsored part of the LIE. Yes. He wanted wider lanes. That's right. See, everything comes back to Seinfeld. Sorry. <laughs> So, no, this guy is a total nerd. He's so great. And he did promise me a ride on this bus when I go to L.A. So I am totally taking him Ooh. up on it. Well, have, you, have you ever been in one of the self-driving cars? I I don't think so. I've Well, you'd know. Unless you count the times that I've fallen asleep at the wheel. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm, here's, I'm, a, here's four hours ago, Danica Patrick, who is a race car driver and a Penn & Teller riding... The first self-driving vehicle in Las Vegas. Uh, this is obviously before the ride. They're smiling. Uh, I wish. Why they would were, they not be smiling after the ride? I'm just kidding. I would like. Oh. To, <laughs> I would like to see a picture of them. Because because Teller just car. wouldn't shut up. Yeah, right. He is such a gab, gab fest, gabber mouth. Um. All right. What about this Disney story? I like this story. I thought Jeff Jarvis might have something to say about this. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Los Angeles Times has been doing a series of articles on how Disney manipulates Anaheim to reduce its tax bill and get special treatment and favors. Disney didn't like that too much. Disney, which, by the way, owns ESPN and ABC, is actually a fairly large journalistic entity in its own right, said LA Times reporters can no longer come to review our movies. And uh, at which point the New York Times said, well, our, then our report, our reviewers are going to your movies. That was really fascinating. That was awesome. Together. Right on. I was so excited. At which point Disney yeah. said, oh, screw it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great when the LA, the New York Times sticks up for the LA Times. Well, uh, other journalists did it too. Like, yes. I think USA Today. and Yes. It's right I mean, I'm, I'm just saying like all, like I was so excited that this was, Journalists standing up for journalism. This is yeah. this is the essence of the church and state. When I was when I was a, not not to uh, make this really trivial, but it's what I do. Um, when I was TV critic at People, I gave terrible reviews to Hallmark Hall of Fame specials because they were so treakly and awful. They really are awful. They, you they, jerk! They, ah, they the but you were eight years old, Stacey. Of course, they were good for you. <laughs> no, she says she likes Channel them now. Cheesy movies. <laughs> yeah, see, that's no, I don't. That's this is a this is a hidden vice of many people I know. Um, but they pulled all of their, it's their hallmark for, advertising from people. Yeah, that's what happens. That's what they used yeah. to do. Yeah, and I don't, so I don't blame them for I will, that. I guess I, I will say that I once wrote a story at Kega Ohm that really upset a large networking company, and they said to my CEO, "We're going to pull our ads and our subscription to your." We had a research service, and my CEO was like. All right, then. See you later. Go for it. Bye. And yep. they they did it for like a hot second. And then eventually my CEO, I, he didn't even tell me. That's how like- Which awesome is the right thing to do. The right, right thing is to not, to not to influence you. Yeah. I found out like a year later because we were drinking and he was like, by the way, I totally stood up for you. And Yay. I was like, oh, thanks. Yay. And then the is company that, went out of business and yeah. Yeah, well, never mind all that. <laughs> see, if only, if only, see, Stacey, instead of holding up for principle, if only it had gone after money and only money, you'd still be employed there and everything would be okay. Well, what I'm hoping is I can get podcasters to all agree to boycott Apple until they let me into their events. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. going to happen. Not going to happen. Yeah. But really, is Disney's behavior any different? No. 
No, it's just weird I mean, that Disney's in a, is a has ABC. I mean, like, yeah, it's a slight problem. <laughs> ABC it's doesn't it's big, make money for them. It's a big company. <laughs> There's lots you of know. arms. By the way, also the the New York Film Critics Circle said, we're, well, then the, we're, uh, Los Angeles Film Critics Association said, well, then the, the Boston Society Film Critics they're not eligible for any of our awards in that case. I don't know. I don't think the uh, Oscars said the same thing. No, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> no Oscar thing. Uber. This is this is an example of just press release. We might have flying cars in LA by 2020. Then again, we might not. Then, then we might not. It could not have. It might not have. Los Angeles will be the third test city. NASA will provide logistical support. Uber has a flying car project called very nicely Elevate. Uh, and Uber's head of project product, Jeff Holden, announced at the Web Summit in Lisbon today. The company is adding Los Angeles to Dallas, Fort Worth, and Dubai as cities where they hope to pilot their aerial taxi service by 2020. And here is an artist's depiction of <laughs> what it might be like to get in a flying taxi cab. Can I say that both the private jet thing we were talking about earlier and this have a woman business traveler Who's, right on. You know, I was That's like, good. yeah, because even when I'm traveling for business, I'm I'm definitely in the lounges and stuff. I am definitely a minority. Really? So I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Like so just as a woman. She's ascending uh, the elevator. She has used her Uber app to call a flying car and is now going out of the roof of the building and is being ushered along with other women and one guy. Oh, no, there's another guy. Into her flying car, which really looks surprisingly like a helicopter. <laughs> Not sure how this is different from flying a helicopter. Yeah, they've had this in New York City for years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it used to be a, in the Pan Am building. It's a helicopter, folks. You See, I imagine a one-person drone. Is there no driver? No, there's even a driver. Oh, but look at his fancy oh, screen. Yeah. <laughs> Is she going to land in the backyard? Sit we back, drop down there? relax, and enjoy the ride. You know, he's got to go to a special transit center. It's just like drive, taking a helicopter. Yeah, exactly. So the question is, if you buy the Uber helicopter, do you get the Uber cars that take you back to your home I think that's what free? just happened. Yeah, that, that oh, she, she got, got an Uber car. car. An Uber the, car. The, the, from, uh, yeah. So the last mile problem is solved. Oh, that is a tremendous pun being made in the, the chat. Oh, yeah? What, <laughs> what do they say? It's a liftoff. L Y F T. Totally. Well, I was it. just listening. I'm listening to a really good book right now. What's it called? You might like it, Leo. You might like it, Stacy. Um, oh, I see. I've changed my launcher for. What's it about? It's about uh, capitalism in America. Oh God. No, but it's it's. I learned all <laughs> Americana. A 400-year history by a a, a a startup guy named Boo Srinivasan. That that does sound good, actually. And it's really very good. Um, it starts off with Mayflower and the economics of it. And they weren't really. It was an economic thing. See, it's all capitalism. It, uh, it's all I ugly. I like capitalism. it. And all I'm right. up to the Telegraph now. It's it's. I think you might like this one. Uh, what's I'll it called it again? I'm Americana: A 400-Year History of Capitalism by Boo B H U Srinivasan. Good. Putting it on my audible wish list. It's oh, I have, I have a book the... recommendation for y'all. You do? What's that? It's, it's kind of nerdy. I don't know if Jeff would like it, but Leo, you might. It's called A Mind at Play, How Claude Shannon Invented ah, the Information Age. I love that book. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it came out over it... the summer. But we I, just got... I think I so... bought that one. I got bored yeah. by it. Well, <laughs> yeah, see, Jeff, am I right or what? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I think I bought it and I started listening to it. Because I'm interested in Shannon. Yeah, Shannon's Shannon's Maybe I didn't. No, I, I didn't. No, I didn't. No. Nope. But wasn't there an issue with one of the authors that we were talking about? Oh, was there an issue? Yeah, I think so. Tarnation. Is he a jerk? I can't remember. I should write a book because there are no issues with me. <laughs> you should. You never harassed me. I'll vouch for you. I, I, I'm kind of snippy sometimes, and I have threatened to punch you. So <laughs> I, I, I consider that <laughs> well, playful banter. I think that uh, he deserved it, Stacey. Repartee, and I deserved it as well. No, yes. I th I hope that it's the book Claude Shannon deserves, because, of course, he's without him, we don't really have what we, you know, technology. We don't have computers. 
So that, you know, or shit. mobile broadband. Oh yes, because of the uh, what is that? The TDMA did he invent or? Uh, no, he did. Part of Shannon's law is how you cram the number of bits right. per hertz right. in your spectrum. So how many literal bits can you cram in a hertz of spectrum? Oh so. yeah, Jimmy Sony. He's another one of. He was an early uh, early uh, victim of uh, the trend that's going on right now. I'm going to close that article because I don't want to. You know, it's the Gawker. I don't want to give him any credit. Is it Gawker? We, I, I, I'm okay with Gawker. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, people are missing Gawker now. Yeah, now I miss we wish Gawker we had so it. much. You know, you look at all this Weinstein stuff. A lot of good they this did. This is the back age then. of Gawker. Yep. Yeah, you got to figure Nick's just going. Oh, Darn Nick it. did. Did you read Nick's piece? No. Nick wrote an excellent piece about just that. Oh yeah, it's on yeah, Medium. Yeah, but okay. So if he's so good, why didn't he see, expose all this stuff earlier? Well, they did. They they were working on Weinstein. Okay. Okay. Good. People weren't listening to it because it was a gossip brag. Right. That's right? what they should have oh, worked on. on. Not outing people who didn't, you know, I mean, th that's what they should have worked on. Today's well, gossip is tomorrow's news. If you go to Medium, it's the top post. That's all right. I'm not a fan. All right. I remember that. He wrote nasty articles about it. Actually, Nick, did, Nick, did. Nick and I made up. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it <laughs> was. It actually was, it was nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I let you guys know. Yes, that you you are are married to Nick Denton. No, I'm getting hungry. I oh, oh, that that we can do something about. What time is it? Oh, it's almost seven. Like, Jeez. We oh we still God. can talk, but I just want to give take you a the break, and warning. I'm gonna give you. Do we have this anything to say about Al Walid bin Talal being arrested by the Saudi prince? I don't know anything about Saudi politics except what I've read in the New York Times. Yeah. so I have nothing to add here. He, but of course, I'm happy to talk about it. One of the big investors at Twitter, at Lyft, at Apple, is a Saudi billionaire. You know, it's they claim it's a corruption investigation, but I think the people, most people I trust say it's just a power consolidation. There's oh, a yeah. Big, there's yeah. a big... Uh, but the, the best part is they're arrested and put in the Ritz. Yeah. Well, at least he's got a nice stigs. The Ritz is not too happy about the brand association, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I never met the guy. I don't know. Uh, Snapchat wants to redesign... So that it's easier for the oldsters to use. See, this no, is. No, don't is, go after old people. We're <laughs> well, useless. I made that part. This is up. the ruination of Facebook. But I never met somebody under 25 who found Snapchat in the least bit difficult to use. Right. Remember, they're struggling. Their stock's been going down as their. Uh, in fact, the latest quarterly results were bad because uh, they've been losing a lot of users. So they want to. Um, they realized that what was a benefit in the in the early days of being hard to understand, so that you know teenagers would show other teenagers, "Oh, you do this," um, is no longer a benefit. I don't know. So they want they want to. That's what happened. Is Instagram got everybody over twenty five? Oh, there yeah. was a story I was going to ask us about. Yes, we're going okay. through it quickly because so we can get to dinner. It's your no, in in. I, I give you that as the warning. Like you've got half an hour before I get hanged. Oh, no, no, no. We're, we're almost so, done. Yeah, yeah. But I got to run too. The Texas, the Texas church shooting um, and the FBI having challenges decrypting the gunman's phone. Um, yes. I thought it was interesting that they yes. asked about fingerprint reading. Yes. What I did wonder though, what happens with face ID? Uh, they would, would just, that... they would just say, look at this. It's just like taking a fingerprint. But now he's but he's dead. Oh, so they wouldn't be. Able could to you use it. a dead body to unlock? No. Your them? eyes need to be open. Well, okay. If you have attention, there's a setting on the face ID that says, "Do I have to pay attention or not?" And you can turn oh, really? that off. It's on by default. I turn it off because it okay. means it, it works more often. You don't have to look at it specifically, and then it might work. But they, I think your eyes have to be open. I do, but I guess I don't know. That's I, I was open. like. Oh, what does here's that mean? The, here's my my only point on this. But we're going to see the whole thing now. You see why we need to be able to decrypt cell phones. But what did they do before there were cell phones? Did they ever solve crimes before there were cell phones? The fact that well, this is this is this is wiretapping. Yeah. The, well, yeah. but the fact they didn't that have, they had no recording of your, of your, of your that, phone but calls, it's more right? than your phone calls in here. There's everything in here, right? The fact right. that we have now something we carry in our pocket that has our entire lives on here, of course, is a gold mine for law enforcement. But it's a brand new gold mine. This is something that never existed before. And I would submit it should be protected just as the contents of your mind are protected. Yes. Uh, it's not a wiretap on a phone call. It's not a phone. This is the problem 
with well, wait, principles you can, being um, written to technologies, or laws being written to technology, not to principle. This is the problem I have with worrying about legislators going after the internet. Uh, the by example, the way, they know who did it. First class mail. They know who did it. <laughs> I guess yeah, they want to see if anybody probably, else did it. Anybody else did it, yeah. Well, so the other thing is you you do have and you have had in the past access to people's computers. So like if I am – once I am arrested for committing a crime, they can search my entire home. They can grab my computer. They can try to get all they want off of it. So, but and if I, your and computer is encrypted, there's – They can't do anything about it. Well, and there's a guy who's in jail with an indeterminate sentence mm -hmm. because he won't mm -hmm. unlock his uh, hard drive. Yes, that's right. But it's right. a weird case because the judge said this is different because we know there's child pornography on there. So I, it's, I, you know, but that's the point. And the same thing with fingerprints and face ID. Uh, traditionally, courts have held that they can't get a password, but they can get fingerprint just as they do when you go in and you get fingerprinted or take a piece of your hair for DNA. Uh, but not all courts. Some courts say no. Or you want to go after your husband. Yeah. Or, we didn't or, talk about that story yet. Yeah. Yeah. What, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a what I don't even know the flight that was it was a it was Iranian nationals on a flight to somewhere in the Middle East. Why the husband falls no, they asleep? Were coming, they were the they were going asleep. to Bali. Going to Bali. That's right, Bali. As, as, the family was as, going as on one vacation. Does. What a nice vacation. As one does, yes. it's on Qatar Airlines or Qatar Airlines, and the wife reaches over, takes the guy's phone, puts his finger on it because he's asleep, and discovers he's having an affair. Starts screaming. Plane has to. <laughs> Has to turn back. <laughs> it doesn't turn back. It lands. It diverts to Chennai. Diverts. Diverts. It diverts. No. No Sorry, Bali I'm for like, them. We we got to tell the story right. Yeah. <laughs> and they were actually allowed on a later flight to Bali, Just so they were allowed to continue. Can, calm down, and you can get on the next flight. Just calm down. We don't care if you so, had an affair or you put your finger on the fingerprint reader. Just calm down. And she was she was drinking, so. I, as as a woman who is very, very expressive, I would say, had I discovered that my you husband was having an affair, of course you would. They might, they might have to divert the plane. I would have just, <laughs> I would have just sat there and cried myself. Oh no, no. <laughs> Although her child was with her, silently sobbed into my uh, airline coffee. <laughs> You're not supposed to drink the coffee on airlines because they I don't know. clean the pots. Out. They don't, they, not just the pots, <laughs> the whole water system. All right, this is more up your alley. Uh, Harmony Link. <gasps> we talk about that on the podcast. I figured you would. Harmony's sending out emails to owners of the Harmony Link, which, by the way, is a cloud-based service, including, you know, hardware has a cloud-based back end, that after March 2018, it's going to stop working. In other words, if you bought a link, it will be bricked. Yeah, this is a terrible thing. And so I'm going to go is, straight from... But what is Logitech to do if it's an obsolete product and they don't, they have to support it forever? Here's my thing. I've been calling for this. My, my celebratory, like, da -da. I've been calling for this for a long time. Companies need to create expiration dates for consumer products. Uh, if it's a software-based product, you need to say, and this is happening in the enterprise. Microsoft's always done this. When they when they put out a version of Windows, there's so a does, Yeah, spin. so does Google, so does Apple. Yeah. So now when you're, you know, this solves a lot of the problems because consumers can say, oh, I don't want to buy this because it's only got a five-year lifespan. So that, that's my take. Kevin has another take, but I don't remember what my it is. My take is don't buy anything that requires a cloud service. <laughs> or if you do, make sure you can supplant it and keep it running if you want to keep using it. Also a good option. <laughs> Here's one. We could just do the headline and move on. Greta Van Susteren is launching an app called Sorry. <laughs> and I think that's fair. For what? Huh. <laughs> Everything. Uh, it's actually, uh, you, you will get to accept or reject apologies from a friend or from a public figure. Uh, if it's a public figure, figure, we all get to see and vote on accept or reject. So, oh my God, it's like hot or not for public shame. Yeah, oh! so Kathy Griffin, she gives as an example on her Facebook page, Greta does. As an example, Kathy Griffin, remember she uh, she the picture of her with a chopped off head of Donald Trump. She could apologize on sorry. Was it enough or not? People would vote. 
How would she know if her apology was accepted without the vote counter, asks Greta. Or how about when a cable news network apologizes for a blunder, a pol politician for cheating on a spouse, dove soap for that commercial? It's just endless, says Greta Van Susteren. Everybody's got an app. And I, don't I think have an this app. is this is an app for the times. Sorry. The sorry app. Let's take a break. Picks of the week coming up. And I'm gonna start with talking about the lighthouse, which I know, Stacey, you've you you told me I was a dork for not buying. So I went out and bought one, and I love it. Lighthouse is the only security camera that has a LIDAR in it. You might say, well, what the it's it's not LIDAR. Well, it's LIDAR like, right? What is it? It is a time of light sensor. Or, sorry, time of flight sensor. Time of flight sensor. Uh, it doesn't spin around like the LIDAR on top of a Google car. It's right here. But what it does do is it get, makes a 3D map of everything out there. And that allows it, this is a security camera. It's got infrared uh, light so it can see in the dark. It allows it to know what's out there. People, pets, it can distinguish between the two. It knows when you're there, when family members are there, strangers are there. And if you could set, it's got artificial intelligence built into it. So you could say, let me know if uh, my daughter doesn't come home by three. Let me know if you see any pictures of my pets. Uh, it continually analyzes the 3D map of the room to detect movement, to know what's in the map. I remember I had another brand of security camera, which constantly told me that the, that the Mylar balloons in the corner were people invading my house. The lighthouse does not get fooled by Mylar balloons. And what's really cool is it will notify you on your phone. Hey, there's somebody I don't recognize in your house. Show you a picture. And then right below it, it says call, you have a button to call 911, turn off security, or just ignore it. I love this thing. Light.house slash twit is so smart. And I love the, uh, the AI. See, so, okay, here, I'll give you an example. Look, right now, somebody just walked through our house, okay? And it, it pinged me, alert triggered in the living room. All okay? Call 911. I could decide how I want to handle that. It recognizes people. So here's all the pictures of me that it's seen. And if it sees some things that look like me, it says, is this you? I can say, yeah, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. That's not me. That's not me. So that those are all me. So I can say those those are all Leo Laporte confirmed six images. So I'm training it. It really is cool. 1080p live stream, two way talk. Oh, I didn't mention that. You can talk to people. In fact, there's this great thing. It will ping you if somebody stands in front of the camera and waves. So <laughs> somebody's waving. So when your kids get home, they can wave and you can go, Yeah. Oh, hi. You're home. Yeah, I'm home from school. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. It's got three different permission settings. So you've got owner, member, and I um, can't remember what the third one is. I should look at it. So you can say, look, I, I'm the primary owner, but Lisa is a member, and don't bother. And we, Oh, and this is very important for Lisa. She doesn't like the idea of cameras being on when we're walking around in the house. She doesn't want to see people to see her in her jammies or whatever, or just want to put it on the internet. So whenever we're home, camera's off. We're home. It's secure. We don't have to worry about it. I can go on and on. This is so cool. You can say, what did the kids do while I was out yesterday? You can get a timeline. It'll play back video, a video timeline. Look at this. Leo Laporte left. Leo Laporte arrived. I know exactly what time I got home, what time I... This is incredible. I can say when it pings me. Uh, I could say, you know, uh, are, are there children in the house? <laughs> I can't say how old. Are they old or, or what? So I'm going to leave... Uh, I'm going to leave security alerts on, but I'm going to say it's all okay. I can get a recap of all the pet activity in the house or all the people activity in the house. This is so cool. Um, I, I can go on and on. This is the smartest home security camera I have ever seen. I love the AI built into it. I love the 3D sensor, the time of flight sensor built into it. Um, and, and it's not available. So thank you, everybody. Good night. No. Pre-orders were sold out. It was it went out like crazy, but they're gonna they're making them as fast as they can, and they're gonna ship a new batch very soon. And I want you to get in there and get it. Light.house slash twit. You'll get 15% off the lighthouse when it ships, and by the way, a chance to win your own lighthouse plus a year of service free. That's a $399 value. Lighthouse 
is at light.house slash twit. Put your email address in there, and they'll notify you the minute they're ready to go. And I think it's going to be soon. And you'll get 15% off as well. This thing is so cool. We have, we, this is our studio one. I have them all over everywhere now. Because it's just, it's much smarter. And it, it doesn't ping me when, um, when it's not a problem. And, it, and best of all, unlike any of these other cameras, when we're home, there's cameras off. I like that. Light.house slash twit. See site for contest rules. And of course, 15% off Lighthouse when they ship. Now, what's Stacy's thing the world wants to know? Ta-da! Okay. You know how we were talking about security earlier? Yeah, we were. It was. It was a thing. Oh, I never. I haven't. Uh, I haven't unwrapped my. Uh, See, I prefer something like Lighthouse to a monitoring service. I want to monitor it, and then I can decide what's going on. Right? I like that better. So what I have here and is this is this is very DIY, very nerdy. So be advised, and don't. I am touching the boards. Just. Ignore me. So this is from a company called Connect with a K. Uh, it looks sorry, like connected. a Raspberry Pi or something. What is it? It is. It's it's a little board yeah. connected yeah. is the name of it. And what it does is it connects in with your wired security uh, system. So what this does is it, you connect the wires in through here and you put them in and then it will take all the sensors that are wired into your house and your existing old school security system and you can now integrate them with smart things. And it's pretty cool for a certain class of people who is not like this is not something your grandma. But or this doesn't use and this is that thing where if you're buying a cloud service and they discontinue it, you're out of luck. This you 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 own this. You own this um, and you have an app that it will connect to on your phone. Are you going to so, use open source software with it or um, there is an app. Uh, it is open source. Oh, nice. Um, now, I have not installed this because I thought I had a wired security system, and it turns out I don't. Oh. I have wireless. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh. oh. So I have not seen this working. Oh, look, here's the brains. Um, la, la. La, la, la. Uh, so basically all this works together. It is a solution for a problem that some people will have, and it is – Probably a nice one. I just need to find a home to install it in and see. So my hope was to actually tell you, hey, this is amazing or this sucks. But well, you will. We'll hear about it. Where? So, what is the website for? Connect. Oh, it is. Con oh, it is prelaunch.connectedwithak.io. Oh, connected with a K. I know. It's, it's complicated. Well, somebody or no, it's connected. It's huh. not complicated. It's an alarm panel. Coming soon to Kickstarter. So it is early, so, early days. Yes. Yet. So yeah. what I have is a DIY kit. And yeah. this is something like you would put in the back of your, if you wanted it to be on your wall, you would have to put it in the back of your existing alarm panel. They say that that's a problem because the metal enclosure is going to mess with the Wi-Fi signal. <sighs> they are wrong. They sell this ugly plastic blue thing that you can stick it on, but no <laughs> sane person is actually going to want, you know, boards on a wall yeah so this is very diy but it does solve a real problem indeed indeed jeff jarvis well, do you have a number well we could have a number of complaining about the worry about facebook and how it changes the world <laughs> which is the trump's campaign manager or one of his campaign managers said that they raised 280 million dollars via facebook 280 million dollars as i think it was josh marshall said in a waggish twit well we got to look into that one 260 million dollar donation but rather than talking about that, I preferred this number. Yesterday, across America, seven trans people were elected to public Isn't office. Isn't that amazing? I could, it blew me away. Uh, including, and I love this, in Virginia, the, eight, what was he, six or seven term congressman, eight term congressman, who who created the law against uh, uh, bathroom or state 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 legislator? Yeah, state, yeah. I'm sorry, state legislator create the uh, the tra anti transgender bathroom law. So, uh, uh, what's her name? I can't remember her name. Donica, no, Donna. I want to say Donica, Danica. Danica. But anyway, she said, "Well, screw that. Beat him. Beat him." And did you hear what she said afterwards? Danica Rome. Danica Rome. Um, that's right. 
And afterwards asked about him, about her the opponent, she said, Bob is now a constituent of mine. I don't complain about constituents. Oh, that's so great. Like anybody. Isn't that classy? Good for you. She's taking the Michelle Obama high road. The high road, baby. Yep. 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 So it's pretty amazing. And this is and this is this, by the way, I'm gonna argue. The internet has a role in this. The, the fact that we have gay marriage in this country, which I consider a good, is because people suddenly realized that people could come out and you could recognize that you have someone in your family and they're, they're not awful and evil and other. They're people. They're and people. And I think the same now for trans. We have this whole they're thing people. going on about trans and bathrooms and all this hoo-ha. But the internet enables people to stand up and say, I, I'm one. You got a problem with that? You can go and, back to and gay and marriage. That, and I think you could say that, that that same thing happened, that kind of cultural absolutely. shift. Happened and it happened so fast. And I think the internet was a key factor in that. And, so. and you know what? Social networks were a key factor I think in that. So no, you're right. See, why don't you do that from now on? You can be our chief internet cheerleader. Show us all the good things. No, I got to complain too. Okay. <laughs> I don't mind. It, uh, the uh, Robert G. Marshall was a 13 term incumbent wow. delegate. In the Virginia, what do they call it? The, they have a funny name for it. Uh, the House of Barristers. Oh. Deberts. <laughs> yeah, D Deberts. He Delegates. called himself, Delegates. yeah, he called himself Virginia's chief homophobe and introduced oh. a bathroom bill which died in committee. Uh, Danica Rome beat him. That's got to hurt. <laughs> Did you see um, his sister? Is it, she went on to Twitter. I've got to find her now. She went on Twitter and basically, it's my brother. And uh, I'm sorry he lost his job, but, you know, basically he just said karma, man. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Ma Marshall refused to debate Rome and refused to call her her. Insisted on calling her him. What a... Yeah. <laughs> D-bag. What a Richard. All right, we we gotta go because Stacy's dying, and I'm I don't have anything right off the top. What do you want, Stacy? Stacy, yes, sir. What's for dinner? What's for dinner? We're going out tonight. Nice. What do you so? What's for dinner? Where are you going? I don't know yet. That oh. everything is. We we live in a democratic household. Oh, so you use herbal spoon you spin wins. the spoon. When your daughter wins, where do you end up going? <laughs> uh, it depends. Kids Either... tend to be tyrants, don't they? No, she's not a tyrant. She no, just doesn't eat a lot of stuff. Good. Uh, they just have probably veto power, Trudy's. That's so that that's Trudy's is Mexican food. That's actually where I sent the queso picture. Sounds nice. Um, oh, sounds yes. Nice. You're going to have some queso, baby. But I don't know if, if it's queso night or not, because mm. we did have that Friday. Mm. You can I'm have thinking queso sushi every dipped night. in queso. Queso. I'm oh. thinking that. Okay. <laughs> eat queso every day. Everything's I will tell you. Queso. Where did I go? I went to a place. They take a sopapilla without the honey and powdered sugar. They stuff it with brisket and they pour <laughs> queso on it. Ew. And it is delicious. It does sound <laughs> bad, but good. You know, it's so so good it's bad or so bad it's good. I'm not sure which. Oh, oh here's Donica Rome is on MSNBC right now. Nice. I'm going to run because uh, I don't want anybody yeah. to die of starvation. I thank you all for being here. We do this week in Google. What a fun conversation. You guys are so good. Jeff Jarvis, City University of New York. What would Google do? Buzzmachine.com. All over my Facebook feed. Stacy Higginbotham. <laughs> That's what's the problem with Facebook. It is. Stacy <laughs> on <laughs> IoT.com. At Giga Stacy. All over my Facebook feed. I wish more, I had more. I want more Stacy on my Facebook feed. But you can eh, get more uh, Stacy in your inbox if you subscribe to a great newsletter and listen to a podcast with Kevin. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Jeff. We do this show every Wednesday, 1 30 Pacific, 4 30 Eastern. That's now 2130 UTC because we're on standard time once again. 2130 UTC. Please stop by. Watch out youtube.com slash twit or twit.tv slash live. Join us in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. And if you can't be here live, subscribe so you'll get a copy in your in your podcast client, your, your pocket cast, your overcast, or your iTunes every single week. You don't want to miss this show. We'll see you next time on This Week in Google.